Good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's Boys from the Baltic Star. Um, ah, good subbing Kelly. I think that came in last time, thank you. It's nice to see it. I've got an entrance to make. <laughs> an entrance with a subscription. <laughs> Hello um, Kelly, welcome. welcome. The, the Thanks th Kelly. The third part of the MetaMind I believe now. That it's, it's spreading like a, like a sickness, a disease, <laughs> a virus, um, a fungus. Uh, but yes, hello to the MetaMind and the rest of you. Welcome to tonight's Boys in the Baltic Star. It is Friday, and on Friday we play Traveller, unless we do something else. Um, if you've uh, never been here before, hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching through the, the warm-up to get to us, the main event. If you don't follow us on Twitter, consider it at Boys Baltic. We're on Instagram, uh, where I can be bothered to do graphics, which is Boys in the Baltic Star. We're here, there, and everywhere, and we do it all for you because we've said before we could just go over to um, Ben's house and sit around the table and just play it by ourselves quite happily but we wanted to share it and hang out with you guys uh, the shoes are on the rack I'm afraid Kelly I'm in bare feet now I've gone very very hippie right now but um, anyway this is Boys and Baltic Star is a Traveller roleplay game Traveller the science fiction game we use the Mongoose second edition um, if it's so, if it's your first time, that's what we play. If you're back for the billionth time, welcome back to new friends and old friends. As always, you can spend your credits. So click on the red sun. There's lots of things to spend it on, which will interact with the game. Some of them. Um, please feel free to. We will break the third wall. We'll break the fourth wall. We'll break the fifth wall if it's there. Um, mm -hmm. Things that are suggested in chat end up in game quite often. Um, any of us that aren't too busy at that moment in game tend to post a little bit in the chat as well uh, so please feel free to it's a friendly and welcome place but also feel free to lurk of course that's absolutely legit but if you want to spend some points in chat please feel free to do that too Ewan has just redeemed I'll drink to that a very important one um, we feel that there's times in the game when we want to drink to something and toast to something and um, 
we want everyone to be able to show their appreciation of that. So we've made it one credit. So you should always be able to afford that. Uh, as always, everything else is what it costs. Uh, some things cost more than others. It generally should tell you what it is. Um, I want to point out uh, two tonight. Uh, clonk. If you click on clonk, someone in the game at the soonest possibility has to go out their way to hit something or punch something or kick something. And Ben will normally make them make a roll or do something. And we'll quickly run a little thing around that. So that's quite a fun one. Um, the other one which came in the other week, which is Regale Us With A Tail. So you can click that and suggest an NPC. Or I reckon an NPC as well. A PC or NPC who's in the scene that has to like pause the whole thing for a second. Just to tell them a quick tale from their past or something. Just a little short, a little short nugget. Just to add some annoyance to our lives. Um... <laughs> So that's all that. So please sit back or interact as much as you want. Hang around for as long or short as you are able. Um, so who are we? Up oh, the geeks. Oh, Kelly. Did Kelly join us after the geeks? Uh, the Must ge have done. The geeks are the finest buckyball team in the whole universe. The geeker geeks. Uh, they're Sarai's favourite team. She got to play on the fan team with them along with... Who else was it that played for them, Ben? Yeah. In the crew. Was it, was it uh, Rick, Rick Verlo. Rick Verlo. Verlo. They played in the fan game. So they're our favourite buckyball team. Well, generally. And a lot of various members of the crew have blazers or shirts uh, with the with the Geek of Geeks stuff. Or fish hats. That's where the fish hats come from. Because um, they are their logo is fish. So there you go, the Geek of Geeks. And, and, and it's worth pointing out, I think, that now you've gone to all the trouble to explain it, Kelly probably understands less well <laughs> than before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all you need to know is up the Geeks. When we need to celebrate something, just up the Geeks. They're a sports team. They're a sports mm. team yeah, that we like, and they're green. They're Soraya's sports team. They're Soraya's sports team. Ball, yeah. yeah, she loves Buckyball, it's her favourite sport. Um, so, uh, that said, let's speaking of Soraya, let's quickly do a quick introduction. I'm going to try and do it. Can you be in charge of the exclamation marks, uh, one of you two? Yep, I yeah. can do that. Because I'm going to change the top as I talk about them for once, because I never normally do. So, if you look to the top of the screen, you should see that Car Alaska has just appeared. That is one of the characters that I play. Hello, my name is Luke. Um, I'm in the bottom corner, my guns are out because it's hot again. Um... <clears throat> Cara Alaska is a, an artist, she's a carouser, she was an art student that became an artist, that became sort of a hacker, um, she's good at drinking, good at chatting, and good at art, but if you put her in a firefight, she will break, so we hide her. Yeah, exactly, she's the one that, she, canon-wise, she came up with the whole Bast sign and logo, so we've got mm -hmm. a lot to thank her for. Um, Soraya is the other person I play. Sarai's a bit different. Sarai worked in the Scouts for many, many years, so her, uh, her societal skills are a bit lower. She spent a lot of time by herself, um, but she's very good friends with Stefan. Um, she's kind of a hand Solo kind of character, good jack-of-all-trades, can make things out of... All she needs in life is um, gaffer tape and WD-40, and uh, she can do anything. Maybe a, maybe a drink as well, but she's good. So that is who we've got for me. Sitting next to me is my friend, my comrade, my buddy in arms, the man who I can fist bump tonight because we are next to each other. Just go oh, forward. Oh, <laughs> go on, that's it. Mean, we've never got it as good as that one time. I'm glad you gift that perfect time though. Me too. Me too. It is, it is the man who lives his whole life in uh, Greyhill Bast's shadow with him looking over it and watching his screen to check that he's doing things correctly. It the Grey Hill Bass dream sequence. <laughs> the Grey Hill Bass dream sequence. Uh, I have them every night. It's Ewan. How are you doing, Ewan? I'm good, thanks, Luke. I am good. That's why I like I'm excited. To... I'm excited. I'm excited you're here with us. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had lots of other stuff to do on a Friday night, obviously. Right. <laughs> That's true. It's, it's amazing we get you in at all. <laughs> <laughs> so who who do you play in this marvellous adventure? Uh, I don't know. Who are we starting with? I play uh, Stefan. Oh, good choice. Who is the... I suppose the, the Chewie to, to Soraya's Han Solo if <laughs> Chewie was a bit more like Han Solo and got in loads more trouble. 
<laughs> and was less good at you know looking after themselves. Uh, generally <laughs> sneaky, streetwise, uh, dexterous, but not very well educated. <laughs> a human. He does know his clarity. The streets. He knows his clarity yeah. from his Beaujolais, though. So, what was he, that? He knows his claret from his Beaujolais. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, what you need, that's what you need to be educated in. <laughs> he knows his uh, Bloody Marys from his mimosas. And he knows which one he prefers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Precisely. Uh, and I also play Agnar, who is a Varga um, wolf person, former general, good society, pretty good dexterity once again. Uh, but as weak as Stefan is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> harsh but true. But harsh but true. Hey man, the numbers don't lie. <laughs> no. <They> don't. <laughs> is he weak because he's so, 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 so old? Yes, yeah, he is the grand old age of 42. <sighs> You guys have got to stop referring to that as well. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing now. <laughs> I, I, I will in December when I hit 42. <laughs> we, we never mentioned his age. Agnar's yeah, birthday is always we're, in we're December. We're aging a, a lot quicker than they are, aren't we, to be fair? Yeah, it's true. Oh, no. <laughs> this could end poorly. Oh. Well, thank you, Ewan. Um, I'm looking forward to this evening. Um, for those that haven't watched before... Um, you and all do this thing where he sits back for a little while, sits back in the mix, and then listens and works things out, and then hits an absolute home run of a plan. And it's worth watching. It's like it's, well, it's like science mixed with magic. <laughs> it's amazing. No pressure. No pressure. And no pressure. Yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Uh, now, sitting the other side of Ewan is the man who we have to come up with these plans against. You see, for he's a dastardly man, a man with sneakiness in his heart. And black blood of hatred and vile, who only wants the worst for the team and wants all his nefarious <laughs> plans to come true. That's right. That, that, that sounds like me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. He never lets us get away with anything. He never, he never lets us start businesses or overthrow governments. <laughs> he never lets us spend three hours at a time drinking mimosas in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> he is the smartest man in any room. He lives his whole life in the Twin Peaks dream sequence, which, as always, is held aloft in the background by his legion of topless and oiled, muscular, buff and sexy men. It is our favourite GM in the world. It is Ben. Oh, thank you for the introduction. That's all right. It's getting longer. How are you doing? Yeah, all right. Thank you. That's <laughs> all. I... I took a couple of tumbles over the last couple of days, so uh, so I ended up banging things on other things. But we're um, we're, we're we're soldiering on. You need to get your um, strong topless men to carry you around town in a sedan chair. A apparently, that's both extra and from the <laughs> late seventeen hundreds. <laughs> like the use of the word extra, like you're Kim Kardashian or something. I love it. <laughs> uh. No. Well, I'm glad um, you survived your, your falls, and uh, I'm glad you're here tonight to lead us through... It feels to us like... Through apples. <laughs> <laughs> that we're getting towards the end of our time on Dilabri, but we're running out of time before our flight back. That's right. <laughs> For yeah. our falafels. Yes, it, it's it's now flashing past, isn't it? Like that, that thing that happens as you get older, and it's Christmas every 45 minutes. Oh, Oh, you said that to me this week. It was like, it's June. It was only Christmas last week. <laughs> yeah. like, I said, like, how do you think Ben feels? It's twice as fast for him. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, shall, shall I start by introducing where we are at the moment in the story? Yeah. Um, so, in the outskirts of Azure Port on De La Rue, our travellers found themselves standing over yet another dead body. Um, Omar, 
owner of a very disreputable boarding house for equally disreputable boarders, was killed after a tense standoff, and it became clear that security had been called. The party forgave Harrell, a young resident, uh, for her calling of the guards, and elegantly fled the scene. Uh, they actually made it out successfully, uh, partly with the help of an unknown individual. And after regrouping, they went to the warehouse behind the lagoon to exchange their slightly illegal scale for some much less bulky rocks, which Sammy seemed to believe were authentic. And in the warehouse, they found evidence that the space was sometimes used for trading in people, not just rocks, but there was no evidence of any current activity. On returning to their hotel after an eventful day, the travellers were interrupted by the arrival of Sergeant Detta, someone they last met in cars, this time investigating Irma's murder. He reported that he had a witness and was following a lead, despite the witness not suggesting our heroes had anything to do with the murder, and, by his account at least, despite the fact that he didn't really trust the witness at all anyway. After he wandered away, promising to contact them again, the party retired for the night to their luxurious rooms. And that is where we resume the story. Oh, back in the luxurious rooms. I'm glad I paid for them. Can you describe the rooms yeah. to us again, please, Ben, so I can get my money's worth? <laughs> I can. The um, If you remember, the cadence is built on a number of levels underneath a sort of arch way structured within the shape of the dome and so as you go up each level becomes smaller so each one has balconies that overlook the level below and what what uh, floor did i buy what, what did i rent out ben did you i buy those low for, ones those cheap no, lowers, you, no? You, you you went for one right up at the top uh, um which means that there are if you can imagine this, um, there are sort of increasingly broad spaces below you both sides. So there is a central hole down the middle of this structure, and it also gets wider as it goes down. Uh, sorry, other way around, narrower as it goes down. So up near the top, the um, these balconies are really very thin rings. But as you go down, they, they sort of um, broaden, but also in both directions. So, in essence, by the time you get to the bottom, you've got a pretty solid main floor directly, with just a small hole in the middle, directly above the centre of the pool structure below. But correct me if I'm wrong, Ben. Um, Luke, how much did you pay for these rooms? Don't bring it up, it's a sore point. Well, it was a princely sum, wasn't it? How much? It was quite a lot. For those of you that know Traveller, and how hard money can be to come by sometimes, um, I believe I paid the princely sum of... Some thousands. Um, 11,000... 7, 750 per suite. Yeah, I need... It was 11,250 credits just for a couple of bedrooms for a few days. Yeah. Which is almost... Which is almost a month's mortgage. For starters. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ben, but these are also the oldest rooms in the hotel, I imagine, because yep. you build from the, the top down. That's they? right. As, as oh. I said, all those years ago... Poops is in the house. <laughs> Hill of Rue's properties are built from the top down, yes. You can dangle from the top. Oh, Poops is in the house, the monkey tails are hey, here. Hey, monkey tails, yeah, thank you. Never. You guys all right? I tuned in for a little bit of their stuff. It was good, good stuff. Good stuff. They're going to um, the um, UK Games Expo. Ooh, uh, that's nice. two weekends away, really? though. Yeah, we missed out on that. That's uh, two weekends away. That's in Birmingham. Right, that, time, that sounds brilliant. Last time I went was years ago. Apparently it's huge and quite exciting now. Ah, the pirates. I and T themselves. I hope you're all well. Maybe, maybe we should uh, plan a plan a trip. Maybe next year. Yeah, po poops, lives, poops lives nearby. We can go crash our place. <laughs> how, how big's your garden? Can we camp? <laughs> we can be pretty camp anyway. So uh, I think we'll fit all right. <laughs> yes, uh, welcome. Thank you for the raid, Infinite Monkey Tails, and welcome, Angie Pops. <laughs> that's it. That's all we need. Depends <laughs> on the size of the tent. Do you do uh, cheese on toast of an evening, though? And a nice cup of tea. That's what we need. <laughs> it needs to be a tent big enough for Ben's uh, four royal men to carry him in on his. Uh... <laughs> 
Yeah, because if, if Ben can't have his full well, legion of strong, muscly, oiled men, me and Ewan have to step in and do the job. And my, my, I just don't have the back for it anymore. No one, yeah, no one wants that. <laughs> That's, and the last time I shaved my chest for it, I, oh, I kept nicking myself. Anyway, moving swiftly on from that horrible thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Well, essentially, bedding down. We actually left it as you headed up to your rooms, but you don't have to do anything in particular um, other than wake up the following morning, if you know what I mean. Uh, I've got a quick point. Mm. Do a shop's around here 24 hours, Ben? What are the chances of a shop being open? Um, ultimately, it depends what you're looking for. There are facilities open 24 hours, but depends on the nature of the thing you're trying to buy. Uh, right. Stefan is going to pop out and he's going to pop to the... <laughs> Do you remember when we first arrived, we found like the equivalent of uh, an Apple store, a genius bar? Yep. Uh, he's going to swing by there and see if it's open. Okay. All right. Um, you know what? Um, roll a... Roll a d6 for me, first of all. Oh, a solitary d6. A solitary d6. The d6 stands alone. That's a two. <laughs> a two, okay. Um, so you're, you're making your way towards this, um, towards this quarter. And can you also roll for me your choice of streetwise or reconnaissance with intellect, please? Yes, of course. He will definitely after the conversation that we had he would definitely be checking to see if he's being followed he'll do a couple of laps of a block uh, because it's Stefan uh, it's not bad it's an 8 and what was it streetwise or reconnaissance uh, is a 2 so that's 10 total 10 all right yeah um you make your way there, and the place, uh, which you find without any particular difficulty, appears to be... Um, there's a sign that indicates that it's open, but it looks very quiet and dark. Ah, just the way Stefan likes. <laughs> he'll, um, <laughs> he'll, he'll enter in... Uh, Give a quick look over his shoulder as he goes through the doors, uh, and then see who's see who's working. I suppose. All right. Um, you make your way in through the airlock. It cycles. As soon as you go in through the outer part of the airlock, a light comes on in there, oh. and um, there's a little port window through into the inside of the shop, and. On the inside, you see lights slowly come up from very, very dim to fairly brightly lit um, as you go in. And as the sort of hiss happens and the inside door opens at your touch, you walk in to find um, someone you recognise inside behind the counter, uh, Creaser Drac. Very nice. Uh, that is working there. Working there. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Stefan probably acts just as confused as I am as that, at that <laughs> information. <laughs> um, hello. Although to be to be fair, actually, they gave us the the contact here who would know the slightly more shady person that we eventually went to. Is that right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hello. I wasn't uh, I wasn't expecting you to be so uh, connected <laughs> with the place. <laughs> um, thanks thanks for the tip off earlier, by the way. That worked uh, worked a treat. That's quite all right. Um, you're up late. Anything in particular you're after? Uh, yes, I need a new. Um, I need a new uh, contact device. I need a new. 
Uh, I need some new contact information and a new device to put it on. But I want all my contacts. You know, like you transfer all the all of my information, but I don't want my information transferred. I just want the information on my things transferred. Does that make sense? So you need a new communicator. Yeah. And you want all of the info on your current communicator transferred to the new communicator, except for what? Except for anything to do with me. So I want all my friends' information that, you know, so I can still contact them and I can still make links up with who I've got. But I don't want anything that ties it to me to be on there. Nothing that would make you identifiable. Yeah, sure. Or any information that... Contact information I may have given to, you know, like a a jealous friend or an ex-lover or something to, to be traced to me. Okay. Yes, I'm with you. Okay. Perfect. We can do that. All right. Um, I need you to roll um, 2d6 for me. Well, it does, Ben. We need an NPC, uh, Vanessa von Cotswold. Which should Vanessa. Take... <laughs> Vanessa. VVC, Vanessa von Cotswold. Uh, Cressa, Cressa Drac, Luke is the was the weapons dealer, or uh, somebody that gave us information about a weapons dealer. Yep. On the planet. Oh my goodness! Where did you pull that out from? It's one of the few names that I have written down <laughs> on my scrap of paper with the words "weapon dealer" next to it. Good stuff. Good uh, stuff. Sorry, two d six Ben plus. Um. Just 2d6, please. Oh, okay. That's a 5. Okay, a 5 and a 1d6 separately, please. Okay. okay. That's a 3. All right. Um, there's a sort of um, brief pause, and you get a response saying, I would... Um, transferring the data doesn't take very long. You'll get a new ID, a new com number, everything like that. Um, what might take a little bit of time is configuring one up. Do you want this to be completely anonymous, or are you happy for it to be registered within the system? Oh, that's a very good question. Um... Is there any downside to it being completely anonymous that I would be aware of, Ben? I almost asked that account. I suppose I could have done. If you would, would authorities I mean, if you make expect it completely anonymous, have... it would mean somebody who knew you were on World but didn't have your contact details wouldn't be able to look you up in any kind of directory, for example. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I'd like it to be completely anonymous if I could. Okay. All right. Um, all right. A the the best they can do is a fairly smart, custom-looking Tech Thirteen one. Now yeah, that sounds pricey. How much? <laughs> uh, that'll be two hundred. Two hundred credits. <laughs> so, I tell you what, that's a lot of money, but you've done us, you've done us some solid, uh, some solid favors over the, uh, over the short period that we've known you. Um, it's a deal. All right. Um, it'll take about half an hour or so to fire it up, configure it, make sure it's charged and running. Um, you're welcome to wait, or you can come back. Uh, you got you got a coffee? Uh, no. Oh. No, I can do you water. Um, yeah, yeah, water will be fine. Thanks. Okay. I'll uh, I'll hang around. So a um a small bottle of water is um is sort of rolled across the <laughs> the counter towards you, and um and some work begins in the back. You uh. You get the feeling that, um, though technically open, they weren't really expecting any trade. 
Um, and there's a fair amount of stuff on counters at the back, which may or may not technically be for sale. It may be private projects or things for other customers or things of that nature. Uh, you need to name three Tim Von Cotswold and another Vanessa Von Cotswold. Just what? Three, three, Sorry, th what just happened? Three Tim Von Cotswolds and another Vanessa Von Cotswold. So, so I don't know. Work it out somehow. Three, three Tims. Yep. And two Vanessas total. Yes. Okay. So That's fine. It will do something smart again, like he did with the paintings. He's he's never fox. He's the smartest man uh, in the room. The socks. paintings. The paintings was good. <laughs> That's good work. Okay, hang on a second. Never knowingly foxed. That's his tagline. <laughs> Second hand book. Slightly fox. <laughs> Slightly, slightly thumbed. <clears throat> okay. Um, so you just um, sitting there having a um, having a sip of water. Um, if if she has she gone into the back, did you say? Off in off a little way. Um, there's not a lot of space in here. It's not what you call a huge place. Um, yes, it's it's now a bit way behind the counter, and no attention appears to be being paid towards you. There is bustling. You know, a, bit, a few bits of kit have been moved off a bench, and something's being picked up and moved about. There are a few items on shelves and in cabinets that you can browse if you're interested, but it's it's what you've seen before, of course. Yeah. Um, can Stefan make his way and look at the the custom bits of gear that are lying around and see what's see what's going on? He'll strike up some casual conversation as he does it to you know. Okay. Seem more casual. <laughs> uh, oh. He'll be oh so do you get busy at this time of night normally? You know, just chat shop. Um, amazingly, no. Most people when they see the lights are out, they kind of take the hint. But um, but the I, I'm often here in the evening, sort of doing my own projects. It's a good workshop here. Mm, yeah, 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 it looks um, well. I imagine, just looking at the shop, that it's it's got all the tools you need. Um, sorry, so, sorry to disturb you. I guess. <laughs> no problem. It, feel, it felt like the right time to uh, to do something like this. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's it seems um, it seems like a good time to get something anonymized and electronic. Um, the fingers are working fast. It's, it's obviously this is this is something that uh, there's this is not new to the to the person. If you see what I mean, they're they're experienced and practiced at this kind of work, and um, and there is. It's it's going very quickly. You can see as as you glance down, the, the work is fast, and um, Drac is is you know passing you know, various things about and uh, and and every now and then sort of moving another thing away on the bench to give just a little bit more room, um, uh, pulling out a fairly substantial tablet type device and and connecting the two together before bouncing data back and forth. Um, and then holds out a hand. Your communicator, please. Uh, and he'll he'll hand it over. As he hands it over, he'll just sort of say, "What? Well, what's the? Um, will this still be functional as you know my communicator? Absolutely. Once we're done with it." Yes, this is an entirely parallel channel we're building. We're building for you. Okay. And what if I wanted to completely get rid of this and all my data on it? Do you know the best way? I'm happy to do it myself. You mean completely destroy it? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, there are all sorts of ways of doing it. The way we generally do it here is to throw it in some acid. Ah, wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, and he hands it over. 
Okay. Um, there's a, a few more minutes of work, and then um, and then Drac stands up and and walks over, handing a um, your communicator and the new one back to you. Um, you should find this um, this works quite well. It's a it's a decent range. It's got a very good and stable signal. The security measures are pretty good. Hard to hack into and and break into. It's um it's a fairly modern bit of kit. Uh, perfect. It's it's muchly appreciated. Um, oh, before I forget, here's your your two hundred two hundred credits. Thank you. Take my chip. He's so honest. No, of course he is. <laughs> he's, he's the most honest, least honest person that we know. Um, the um, the transfer goes through, no problem at all. Um, and uh, and you now have two communicators. Wonderful. Um, thank you very much. He'll leave. Have a little look around, see if there's anyone, you know, hanging around on the street corners, and then head back to the hotel, I guess. Anyone, you know, paying particular attention to the doorway that he's just left. Uh, can you roll a streetwise or a reconnaissance recon check with um, with intellect, please? Uh, certainly can. Oh, that's pretty good. That's a double six. Oh. Uh, plus two. Big roll. Total of 14. Yes. All right. Good work. Hang on a second. Hang on, I'm going to sort it. Totally wasted. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I'm giving an emoji for this. Hang on. Where's my Stefan emoji? There it is. All right. With a mimosa next to him, just to prove how good it was. There we go. That was an unexpectedly good roll. <laughs> um, as you leave the, um, the shop, you see a fairly slight not particularly tall figure um, paying you wouldn't normally have noticed but seems to be paying an unusual amount of attention towards you uh, okay Stefan will um, tuck away his, his new communicator and he's less worried about his old one he'll hold it in his hand uh, and he'll Start walking towards the person. Uh, slowly, quickly? Uh, not quickly, but with purpose. Okay. Um, all right. The person in question, when you get to about 10 meters away is now convinced you're coming towards them specifically and turns and begins to run away from you. Which direction? Um, around the rim, sort of uh, clockwise. Is that towards the hotel or away? It's um, directly perpendicular to the hotel, in fact. It's <laughs> The hotel would be inwards towards the very middle and yeah. and the and figure just... is running sort of around the circumference. Uh, okay, Stefan will make a note of it and not worry himself too much. Okay. Well, I mean, he's worried, but he's not going to run after him. What's, what's Stefan going to do all by himself? Uh, um, and he'll... Sorry. Can you truthfully that role is is too good for me to not give you something. So um, <laughs> you do spot on the it's just a very good role, sorry. Um, you do spot on the ground where the person was standing um, something lying there. Ooh. Well, by the way, everyone watching, we're all about dumb luck on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> This is exactly what that was. Uh, he will pick it up. All right. It um, is a just a random credit chip containing, you know, a couple of recent transactions. 
not a great deal of money on it. Okay, he'll um, he'll pocket it somewhere separate to his, you know, his personal credit to it, so it doesn't get all muddled up, and um, make a mental note to drop it off to Kara, I guess. Okay. He'll be the best person to investigate. Uh, and he'll head back towards the hotel. All right. Okay. Um, you make your way back to the hotel without any incident, and you can head up to your room and have a night if you wish. Um, yeah. First, he'll he'll uh, knock on Kara's door. <clears throat> now, Kara is up because she has um, she's been going through those photos that we took in the um, the trading area of. Uh, our gamers, legend, our gamers legends hit a perfect NPC, Ben, while I'm doing this. Baltheriel Brinjarand. Nice. So, <laughs> perfectly, perfectly taken. You do that while I'm looking through my notes. To Greyhill. To Greyhill. To Greyhill, indeed. Oh, I've only got a little dribble. Um, so, Kara's been going through her photos, and she's had the computer up, and her plan was to... She was going to do some initial searches about um, these codes, looking for some stuff about um, slavery and Dilabru and trading, rumours, things like that. You know, going through uh, Space Reddit and all those sort mm -hmm. of things. Uh, and then sort of <laughs> feed, the, feed the photos in, see if she can get any sort of matches with other things. And then her plan was, she was going to do all that, but her plan was overnight, was to leave the... Um, the a the computer agent running on a on a deeper dive, something that she can yep. do in like that two hours or whatever you know. Yeah. So so she's not done the deep dive yet, but she is awake as uh, she hears the knock on the door. Um, I'm, uh, she shares with the ladies, and um, knowing Zoe, she's probably fast asleep because she's far too professional. Um. So, uh, Kara will get up out of bed and pad over to the door and uh, blip it open. All right. Um, okay. Um, you you pop open the door, um, and you are unsurprised to find. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like the roll, just in case it was someone else, so I just couldn't do it. Hey, it was something uh, else I had to check. Sorry. Uh, you're right, Stefan. Oh. Um, you uh, you want a nightcap? Uh, no, no, no. I'm alright. I'm. I'm just on my way to bed. Sorry, it's sorry it's late. Sorry, I know you're busy. You're running that search. I'm pretty sure Stefan know about. It. <laughs> if not, he does now. Um, I I couldn't sleep. I went out for a bit of a walk, um, and I noticed someone following me. They they dropped this on the floor. There's not there's not a lot of money on it, but there's some transactions. So I thought maybe once you're done with whatever you're doing, you might be able to uh, help me out, help us out. I assume they weren't just hanging around for me at this point. I think we're all in it together, aren't we? Yeah, I, I think so. She takes the credit chip out and flicks it around. The way credit chips work, Ben, is there ways that you can trace the history of them? It depends entirely on the transaction. Okay. They can be used for basically cash transactions, but equally they can be used for transactions that involve... Um, actual account transfers and payments okay so uh she'll sort of flick it in her fingers a bit play it around like a like a like a chip from a casino kind of thing trying that mm -hmm. then she'll say um i'll do it now before i run my big agent search do you um do you want to leave me to it or do you want to come in while i do it are you happy to leave it with me yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah of course um and he'll he'll describe the person as well and say oh you man this so uh, a kind of lanky, lanky, lanky person. They ran pretty quickly. A lanky person. Wow. I like the sound of them already. Okay. Well, um, <coughs> if you find anything out there, just you know, drop us a, drop us a message or hit up the group chat. I suppose I'm not gonna hide it from anyone. I figure. I figure it's probably, probably just the police. Yeah, we've had a, we had those people, if, we had those people following us yesterday. That person following us yesterday, to be fair. And so, yeah, yeah, so yeah. people were interested in what we're doing. 
If it if it is the police, I'd quite like to um, passive aggressively hand that back to the to the guy when we have a meeting with him tomorrow afternoon, or well, you know, one of us can. Yeah. Sounds good, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, so you can return it to the owner, obviously. Yeah, for sure. Okay, that's cool, man. I'll do it. I'll do it now. Um, I'll make sure you're the first to know tomorrow, or I'll drop you a private message during you know. Uh, you it's no rush. Now, Just, you know. Let everyone know. It's all good. Oh, well, well, why unless, not? You know, unless it's someone that we don't know, in which case it might be personal. Okay, well, you get a good night's sleep. Uh, I'm just going to pour myself another another vodka with mixer, and I'll just sit. I'll just sort of sit on my bed and do do this for a bit. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Thanks. I'll catch you later, man. I'll catch you later. So, um, Cara slides the door shut, and she pads back over. She's in. Um, She's in like a, just wearing like a long t-shirt. You know, she's very much yeah, into yeah. evening mood. She pads back over. Um, yeah, it's an Essex evening gown. It's, yeah, exactly. It's, like, this, it's very much her style, I'd say, in the evenings, Carl is. And uh, she just wants over. She pours herself another um, another drink, um, adds, adds the juice to it, and uh, grabs a handful of uh, nuts, salted nuts, of course, and um, heads back to the bed, um, sweeping off the, the nut dust that was there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> clambering, uh the drink glass uh, on the on the bedside table next to her, the pile of nuts in a in a little glass like like a goo jar. You know, like goo, we get our little desserts in like a little kind of something little jar that was in the room, a glass or something in there yeah. to pick out. And uh, she sort of looks at the chip and thinks, okay, is it something that we think she could do in an hour or two, Ben? Um, Knowing her roll, abilities, um, a d six for me quickly. Uh, so one. So either very much it's, yes or um, very much no. <laughs> assuming the actual attempt to crack the information goes okay, yep. it'll only take a matter of minutes. Oh, perfect. Ooh. Strong roll. Uh, so she sort of flicks it around. I, know. I, I always forget because it, it can go one way or the other with those, I think. Um, so she sort of flicks it around her hands a little bit. And she sort of uh, smiles herself, takes a sip. Says, okay, let's find out who you are. And she starts to do her stuff, please, Ben. All right. Electronics um, computing check. Yep. With um, the plus one and your intellect, please. Intellect, cool, fantastic. It's computers plus one, intellect plus two, and computers an extra one. So it's a plus four to my roll. We'll see. It is a seven plus four is eleven. Nuclear winter. How you doing? You all right? We got another NPC before we hit that eleven. Crimson Derek. Quite like the sound. Crimson. This is, these, these are some really like interesting NPC names. Crimson yeah, Derek yeah, yeah. sounds like someone who's like a porn star in the evening and and like <laughs> saves people from nuclear submarines in the daytime. I like it. What does both? Why not both? I have a vague feeling it's it's the name of some 17th century pirate. <laughs> I like it. Mm. Uh, Crimson Derek, I love it. Oh yeah, oh, definitely oil magnet. Uh, okay, so what was that? Eleven. Uh, a total of eleven. Yes, please. All right. Um, after <clears throat> after a few minutes, you get some some transactions spit out. There's a lot on here. This chip's been used on and off for a long time. There's a total of 44 creds on it, uh -huh. um, currently sitting there, and it has those um, credits have never been transferred into an account. So, um, so those have are just what's left of stuff that was put on in other transactions, but was never added to the actual named account that's associated with the chip. However, there is a named account associated with the chip, um, and most of its um, incoming transactions are cash. There are a couple of minor business transactions that look like um, a fee paid for like reimbursing something or selling something to someone, you know, like, like if you were transacting on eBay, say. So, you know, the, the, the owner might have sold something for 
15 credits on eBay and got an actual direct transfer from someone's account. Almost all of the, the transactions coming in, however, are um, cash transactions. Um, but the chip does include a link to an actual named account for the owner, and it is in the name of Harel Briani. Ah. Uh, see, I don't know B- B- Barani's son. Could you spell that for me, please? H E R. Yeah, no, I've got Harel. I've done that one. Okay. Time, thank you. Uh, if I've got to actually look it up now, I think it's B R I A N N I. B R I A N N I. A N N I. Yeah. Right. Um. The. Uh, I like to think that in the shadow of the light in the computer, you catch sort of uh, the side of Kara's face with her hair over her face and you sort of see a smile play across her lips um, before she takes another sip. And she's like, ah, our friend Harrell. Interesting. Um, did I ever take Harrell's number? Uh, yes, I have contact with you. I, I give and take my number to pretty much every single person. Mm-hmm. Except the drug dealer, and I made Stefan do that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, thanks. You've got to be safe, Kara. I had to get a new a new contact device. <laughs> but I think I think Kara takes the details of all the women we come across, and we got Stefan to do this. I think it was a good, good bit of safeguarding. You work well as a team. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's how to bill it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Kara's going to um, leave the pick up a drink uh, put the no, f- before she does it can she just set up the agent so that that's out of my mind I guess Ben is that okay something I can do certainly she's... can can Thank you describe you. me exactly what you're searching for yes <sighs> okay let's assume that in that in that sort of however long Stefan was away for like it was 20, an hour all in or whatever right so, Probably, yeah. yeah. So in that time, and she went up beforehand because she was tipped to be away when the policeman was there. So she'd That's smashed right. the rocks and she started her stuff. That's true. So she'd uploaded the pictures, she checked through the pictures, uploaded all the pictures, uh, double checked them, what she could do against stuff that she had found, and like looked around on, you know, done the usual searches that you would normally do. Um, at her level, without too much time, I would imagine she could get a little bit of insight from some local council stuff, but not too much hacking in that time. So mm-hmm. what I want to do, I guess, let's break it down to three things. Number one, um, leave the agent to find better matches with the numbers, the codes, and the stuff we found in the photos. Yep. So that's, uh, Number two, I'd like it to... Um, if possible, dive into trading records for anything that could potentially be slaves. Anything that looks a little bit... Is that something I could do? Is that too specific? Cause I could get um, this... for, for trades that went through the warehouse or for just any trades on the planet? Let's go trades that went through the warehouse. Okay. All right. Yep. And three. Um, so then three would be looking through. So trades through the warehouse, the picture thing, and three would be like histories and history and stories, I guess. Just looking for talk of it, words of it in old documents or something like that. As much okay. as. Okay. And that, that's, I guess, that would be the three main things to focus on. Okay. All right. Um, can you roll a electronics communications? You can have your plus. No. Yes. Hang on a second. Sorry, you can't roll an electronics communicate. Well, you have to roll electronic. You can't have your bonus. <laughs> okay. What well, my? You get just you just get the plus one for the agent. Because it's the agent doing its thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you you get to add your electronic communications but nothing else except the plus one okay so i can't have my intellectual education i get electronic communication it's a thingy okay yeah eight plus two plus one is 11 11 okay all right can you roll 1d6 for me 
Mm. Uh, Croy is here. How are you doing, Croy? You okay? Doing some uh, good work today. You're doing uh, God's own work in your thread today. Some lovely stuff. Uh, three. That's a three. That's a three. Okay. Yes. Um, it looks as if it's going to be not all night, but like it'll be running overnight for yeah. the most part. But it'll be ready in the early hours. That's what I expect. I'll plug it in. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it away from my head and leave it be. Um, as I take the glass and pad through to the... Because we're in the suite, so there's like a living area, isn't there? In each of them. Small, like, lounge sort of space. Uh, yes. Yeah. I'd like to pad through and try and call Harrell, if that's okay. Sit myself down. See if she answers. Okay. Um... One second. Okay. Um, Harrell does indeed answer, and fairly promptly. Hi, Harrell. How you doing? Okay, thanks. Cool, cool. Um, I know this is a, a weird time to call, but we just... Um, I know that we sort of talked about work for you, and I, I wanted to sort of keep you up to date, I guess, on things. Um, we've been pushing more with our with the guy that we're looking at, heading up the um, heading up all the stuff there with the um, safari, and he's in on it. So uh, it's looking more and more likely. If you're still interested, we're really getting close to the possibility now. Yeah, very, very interested. That sounds great. Fantastic, fantastic. It's quite late. Are you always up at this late? Um, it depends on uh, my business, if you know what I mean. Oh, for sure, for sure. Now, uh, I guess now with, and she sort of whispers it, um, your previous employer, um, uh, you're not, you know, no longer your current employer, I guess. I guess that changes your your tasks at the moment. It um it changes a few things, but I do have clients. Ah, uh, so you've got to be out and about and around. Yeah, I mean it's it's a business that sometimes involves visiting. You've been visiting this evening? I know it's your own business, but just making conversation. Uh, no, no, not really. I um, I was, you know, looking for a a couple of things in town, and then and then went home basically. Uh huh. You um, you not been over um, have you been over to our part of town much over the last um, since um, uh, they've done some really nice things here apparently over the last uh, couple of months. Have you been over and seen all the new lovely stuff around here? Uh, around which part is that? Um, by the by the fancy hotel. Oh uh, no, no, I haven't been over there for a while. Ah okay. One thing I wanted to ask, one thing that I've been playing on my mind, just one more thing to take the line off a friend of mine. Okay, just one more. Just one more thing. Um, we got out of the, as I'm guessing you'd know by now, we got out okay earlier. Uh, we got back to where we needed to. There was um, a lady that helped us. Um... Sort of quite a, she was quite smallish. What did we get? Sarai was able to look enough. She talked about it, but it was quite very limited. Couldn't get a face or anything like that. Smallish, I think, wasn't she? A smallish, smallish lady. No one's talked to. You. All you had was sort of vaguely female sized, but you only saw from the back. Remember? Yeah. You don't, you don't know someone that spoke to you afterwards about um, covering for us, do you? Just wanted to thank them, really. Uh, can you roll a persuade for me? Um, yes. You can have 
um, a boon with this oh. and your choice of intellect or social. It'll be intellect then, please. I'll use my brain cogs. Plus four with a boon. Yep. Okay, that's oh, that's fine. That should be okay though. Because that is a 14. 14. Yes, please. Okay. Solid stuff. Um, Solid stuff. Chorus hit a stride. There's a sort of brief pause. And then Harrell says... Well, I mean, yes, the... Uh, your, your friend came round and, and sorted everything out. Which which friend do you mean? We've we've got a lot of friends. We as you, you've 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 known us just for a short time, but we're a friendly bunch. Pick friends up wherever we go. Um, well, you know, um, he was. Was it a she? I'm normally quite good with this sort of thing. Oh, um, oh! I've got a tingle for you. I can't remember, huh. but but I know they were your friend. Ah, uh, not our sister then. I didn't know if you had a sister. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it's that person. <laughs> We should go see Gower. It's his sister. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> God damn it. Well, if you see them again before me, not you might not remember them, but if you do, could you thank them for us? That'd really be fast. It'd be fast. What sure. A, what a swerve that would be. I mean, can you, <laughs> uh, uh, can, can you tell me how to recognise them? Um... Yeah, they they are they are a woman, and uh, you should remember they've got dark hair. I think they have anyway. And um, basically, whatever they tell you they are is um, what you'll think they are. They're pretty. They're pretty good on the hoodoo voodoo. The thing Odd, to... Oddly, I find that works with most people. If someone <laughs> comes up and says, "Hi, I'm a pilot," it's usually because they're a pilot. Yeah, this uh, this friend of ours um, is one of those. One day they're a pilot, the next day uh, they put cheese onto burgers. You know, and they can make you believe either of those two things. Wow. So. But no, thank you though. I appreciate that. Um, sorry to keep you up. Thank you for answering her. I just wanted to like top you up that and thank you. Like I say, if you see our friend before us, just let them know we're thankful. Um, no problem. Um, also, uh, did you see Stefan about twenty minutes ago? Uh, can you um, roll a persuade for me, please? I can. Thank you. Uh, with intellect. Yes, I can. Thank you. <laughs> lots <laughs> lots and lots <laughs> 16 it's getting better this is Kara's wheelhouse <laughs> I think we need to put the spots on different sides of those dice <laughs> I think you do <laughs> mate I just want to the other two just to give people a chance um, the There's there's a brief pause and then and then you hear her voice. Yes. I was going to collect something from the electronics place, the com shack. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. as I got there, I saw him leave and I you know, I I sort of slunk back away. That's all right. It's a... Sometimes you find yourself in awkward positions, right? Where you don't know whether to say hi or not. I'm like that. Either hide your head or... In, in my experience, friends. nobody ever wants to be seen in public with me. Oh, hurrah. Now I feel bad. We always... 
Stefan, Stefan would have had a lovely chat with you. He'd have probably bought you a drink, and he'd have been, he'd have thoroughly enjoyed it. And I totally understand where you're coming from. That you can't trust people, and I think we've given you enough. You've seen enough from us that the jury's still out. But you know, we want the best for you, Harrell. And um, we 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 can't use a friend. And I hope you you come to trust us in that too. Well, I I hope so. If we're going to be working together. Uh, we're not just going to be working together. You're going to be, you're going to be the, the queen of the shack. I tell you, your, your name's going to be legendary as a fine host and purveyor of the of the luxury, uh, the luxury vibe we're giving off. It sounds very good. Oh, it will, and you you can choose. You can you can decide on the on the uniform. How about that? Oh, uh, great. Fantastic. Well, I'm tired now anyway. Um, I've finished my drink. Just go chug a, a decaf and I'm going to get to bed. But a pleasure talking and I'll catch up with you soon, all right? And remember, next time you see Stefan, he's not as scary as he first seems. There's a, a bit of heart under there. Okay. Okay. Take care. Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Casual love you, John. <laughs> <Just drop it. laughs> All right. I feel really bad about those dice now. <laughs> <laughs> can we can we have a com can we have a combat so that I roll badly for twenty minutes? <laughs> minus, <laughs> minus three's everywhere. Um, and then she's gonna do exactly what she said, I guess. Um, pour herself a quick decaf, something just to take the edge off the booze, and crawl into bed. All right. Um. You climb into bed to go to sleep. Is everyone else doing the same, or is anyone else going to be up and about? Well, actually, yeah, Agdal's got a couple of. <laughs> 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 do, you remember, do you remember about an hour ago when Ben said, "Oh, you can go to bed and skip to the next morning," or if anyone's got anything they want to do? <laughs> I am done for the evening. Right. Yeah, that was yesterday. The, yeah, yeah. The night, of, the night of a thousand <laughs> yeah, jobs. Was. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm done. I'm all good. Okay. All right. So the night passes very slowly, <laughs> uh, but it does pass. And um, and in the morning, everyone awakens. As usual, people like Zoe tend to get up um, fast and, and, you know, chipper in the mornings. And oh. other people, not quite so much. No, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Like Zoe strikes me as not being the loudest person when she gets up, but still, I think um, Kara's wondering why she always agrees to share with Zoe. <laughs> as she pulls the duvet over her head for an extra half hour. <laughs> <laughs> the polar opposites of uh, sleep pants. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, Zoe gets up and bustles around. I mean, she's she's used to bunking with, with Kara. She knows... Not to make too much noise early in the morning. Exactly. I think we've got Rose and Cat with us as well, I think. I think this is the winning, this is the dream team. Yep. Yeah, it is. Car is over, Rose and Cat. Wow, what a, what a room. Um, so, so, Car is definitely not the person we started with this morning. Uh, Ewan? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh... That's one room, and then is everyone else in the other room? How many? You, you've got two rooms. We've got right? three rooms. You got Sammy, rooms. Sammy, Freya, Johnny, and Gerg. Yeah. And then you got Soraya, Stefan, Agnar, and Rick are in the yeah. other one. Okay. Cool. So the other three room with Rick. I knew that. Yeah, yeah. I knew that we were all in another room. I couldn't remember. Um, Stefan will still. He'll be up. He'll get up. Um, and he'll. Uh, I suppose he'll. He'll wait around for. Soraya, I don't know how early Soraya will be up, but you know he'll he'll get himself ready and sort himself out and wait for Soraya before he needs to do actually anything. It's, it's not too much, right? It's probably about fifteen minutes as Soraya comes through in a in a dressing dressing gown and her hair 
messily bundled up on the top of her head. Um, looks at Stefan, puts a shh to her mouth, pads over to the coffee machine, pours herself a coffee. St- still with her shh finger there. Takes a few swigs of it. Over to the sofa, sits down, and then lowers the finger. She says, You're right, Stefan, how are you doing? He'll wait a couple of minutes to, <laughs> just to make sure that she's fully awake and understanding. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm good. And he'll, I suppose, just quickly make sure that no one else is around. Um, listen, I've got, uh, I've got some more contact information details. I've got, I've got another communicator. Um, I want to give you my details, you know, just in case. But this is, you know me, sometimes sometimes I like a good joke and I like a bit of a laugh. But this is a serious, you know, this is this is not to be distributed to every, everyone. All the drug dealers on the planet. You know, know what I'm saying? You're, give, you're giving me your, your new number in, in private, well, Stefan. This is, this is a, an in case of emergency. We've, we've, we've known each other a long time, but are you sure you're ready for this? Uh, no, <laughs> not really. Seeing that look on your face, I'm, I'm, not, I'm beginning to regret my decision to tell you straight away. No, I'm going to sign you up to so many advertising campaigns. That Listen, you can, you, can, you can sign it up as much as you want, but just don't <laughs> use my name. Do you understand? Yeah, I got you. Put it, put it under Dr. I don't know, make up a funny name. That's fine. Okay. Dr. Just... Dr. Von Cotswold. Okay. That sounds like a funny name. Hey, I like that name. It's uh, a good alias. It's a good alias. Listen, it's, listen. It's, there's a lot of them. It's listen. like a smith. It'll blend <laughs> in. Yeah. <laughs> no one will ever know. I'm am serious now though. This this contact detail is not to be linked to me. That's fine. Um, Thanks. Uh, so I nods and smiles, and then um, her and Stefan do their their super secret. Um, Stefan and Soraya handshake, which no one else knows. Sure. Yeah. Not even me. And not even chat. No one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. Ah, not a problem, not a problem. Oh, man. Well, another day in paradise, I guess. Uh, what are we doing? What have, what have we got on this? We've got a lazy morning, haven't we? Uh, it's up to us, I think, isn't it? We can decide how lazy it is. It is, oh, it is up to us. I forgot we were a management for a minute there. <laughs> the, before the responsibilities of running a crew came crashing down on me. The only thing you have actually scheduled today is going out to PSP. Yeah, t- 2 o'clock in the office. 2 p.m. I think, isn't it? If I That's right. And then that cop is coming to us in the evening. Or he wants to meet us, I think, doesn't he? Potentially, or it could just be a voicemail. Mm-hmm. Depending, on depending on what he finds out, I think, was the... Uh, Yes, the general deal, wasn't it? Hopefully, no one will knock on us. What do you want to? What do you want to do with this cop, Sora? Do you want to? Do you want to lead him down a, an alleyway? And well, you know, you know how we are with with cops. Yes. Stuff, um, we we both similarly, we both have similar feelings. To them. Like, if he can serve our own purposes, that's one thing. But we're not going to start offering ourselves up as. Uh, potential issues you know you you punched a man's face to death and we we both shot a woman she was a mean woman but we shot a woman to death and we made the whole crew drink multiple bloody marys I, I, i'm less worried about the bloody marys <laughs> i'm honest listen we've had a lot of talk about you know this business and retiring out to this planet I'm, I'm going to be honest, I don't know if it's, you know, subconscious or or what, but this this doesn't feel like the way to start life on your retirement planet, whether you're retiring or not. Do you know what I mean? It's We're hardly laying low. And I don't know whether that's the general, the general vibe from the crew. And that's cool, I don't mind that. I'm just, you know, just putting it out there that maybe, maybe we didn't get off on the best best foot on this planet. He the wants, police already know us. 
Nah, I, I see a two point. people down. We, we've hardly gone lightly, lightly. <laughs> Let's find a nice, quiet place somewhere and retire. Well, we, we got rid of Lara's band, and I think people will be happy about that. People are already talking about it. You know? Yeah. I wonder. Like, we've got some stuff right now that we're management. We know we've got the PSP meeting. Um, yeah. You and I had that private conversation about uh, Penner and Rocco, potentially, of course, when no one else was around. And um, it feels to me the only other thing, the, the only other things we could do in town this morning is something to do with Suda or Pstel. If we actually want to do anything about those two. Yeah, I, I, I suppose we could, we could do that. We could... It's been a while since we've seen that. That sleazy summer bitch. <laughs> so I went a bit American there for our uh, foreign viewers. I really appreciate it. Foreign yeah, to yeah. us, <laughs> not to themselves. Hopefully, um, we could always. I mean, if we if we're desperate and you know we've got nothing else to do, we could always not by the uh, Travellers Aid Society and see if they've got anything. Oh, get any they... jobs they want done or jobs going? Will they take us though? Do you know I don't know. None of us are travellers aid. I'm no expert. No. Whenever my I'm whenever my managing. ship broke down because I wasn't signed up to them, they never came to me. And when they did, I was bottom of the list and had to wait for hours. That's pay a lot uh, more as well because I didn't pay for the membership. So they got no love for me. Could do though. It's just an idea. We're heading. You know, in that... I've, heard, I've heard good things about what they do sometimes. We're heading in that direction anyway, right? If we're gonna, we, we, we should probably tell Stel that we haven't found him a place, and maybe that will f- tell us how to roll from there. And the Travellers mm-hmm. Aid Society is in that direction, isn't it? So uh, it's that's on the way out. It's like as we go out. So yes, the the Travellers Aid Society is inside the domes. Yeah. But you would walk past it on your mm. way out towards the um, the Corin Stelt part of town. Yes, because last time we did that, then we did the Circle Club, and then out to mm-hmm. Stelt, didn't we? Yeah. So we could do that anyway. Give give people a chance to stretch their legs. Not everyone got to see it last time. Yeah. 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 That's true. Right. Let's do that then. Fantastic. That sounds like a plan. I suppose it's a good professional courtesy, you know, especially if we're going to set up on this planet that we at least inform uh, Stelt that. As you say, we haven't found a place. That is true. Well, I've heard that people... Or not a place that we're willing to share. I've heard that people have called us travellers, you know, as I've wandered around a little bit. So it'd be nice to get some aid from the society itself. We are well-travelled. We are well-travelled. Well, especially you, you were scared. Well, my whole life has been travelling. Wherever I lay my hat, that's my home. I've got many hats. <laughs> but this geek... Or, this fishy geek one's my favourite. Yeah. I'm going to wear it all day. I, I heard Carl was spouting some poetry once. I said, bed in the bush and the stars to see, bread I dip in the river. Oh. Something like that. <laughs> She's so smart, that girl, you know. Uh, I forget the rest of it. She's so poetic. I think when 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 we're done here, I think on the on the flight back home, back to the... Uh, do you like how I've called the Baltic Star home, uh, Stefan? Mm. It's definitely home. On... On our flight back home, I think we should get Kara to write like a like an like, like an Iliad, like an epic poem about our adventures. Okay. Yeah, nice. A story of the story of our Odyssey. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Iliad seems like setting quite a high bar. <laughs> maybe like a the a child's first Iliad, maybe. Oh right! Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. On, on cardboard pages. Lots of pictures. <laughs> Lots of pictures, yeah. Yeah. A sort of join the Trojans book. Yeah. H is for Homer, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. A, a bl- <laughs> vlod- vlodacy? <laughs> a vlodacy. A vlodacy? A vlodacy. Oh, she'd love her vlodacy. Don't give her ideas, yeah. though. At least let her think she's come up with the idea herself. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Anyway, I'll tell you what. Shall I order some brunch? Bought up to the room. The room's... And then we'll, we'll we'll get everyone in. Let's get everyone into this one. Let's get all the crew in. Have some nice brunch shared together, and then what? Then we'll head over to the Traveller's Aid. How about that? What a way to go! Yeah, 
Can I can I make a little? I think the I think the Bloody Marys last time was a good uh, a good way to assort, assert our new authority onto the group. It was, um, but I have heard some some complaints, and I think maybe now would be the time to to show them a approachable side and go back to mimosas. Uh, I, I, I mean, we don't have to. I'm just I'm just putting it out there. I feel it would be good to extend the branch of <laughs> mimosas. The I always feel mimosas. Like, you know I love mimosas, but it feels like more of a second and third brunch kind of drink to me. I'll, tell, I'll get some mimosas. Oh, I'll give her a call, and she'll call down to uh, whoever we, the, the button on the phone that calls down to uh, uh, housekeeping or whoever, I guess. Okay, um, it is fairly quickly answered. Hello, hello, Diesel. Shot. How you doing? Ah, oh, what a pleasure to have you in. I hope you're doing well. Are you um? Hey, okay, Diesel Shop. Are you are you streaming after us? Are you uh? Are you busy this evening or are you chill this evening? Um, let's roll call down. Hey, how are you guys doing? You doing good? That's her calling down, Ben. Not Diesel. I've already said it. To Diesel Shop. Oh, he, sorry. He, he okay. already knows. <laughs> I I completely lost track of when you were talking to Jab. Uh, I do apologise. That's what I'm. Um, yes. Um. Yes, uh, can I help? Sure, we're up in the, the three suites at the top. Um, you know the rabble that come and go a bit. Um, is there any chance you could send up a nice, pleasant uh, brunch for nine, please? Bought two, and she gives her room number. Yeah. Um, could you put some um, some jugs of mimosa on there, please? Could you uh, bring up some Irish coffees as well, please? Uh, Th- there were no Irish. Um, coffees with uh, whiskey in, please. Okay, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Step out on the side. Get two Bloody Marys for you and me. Okay. Just, uh, you know, let's keep that authority. Oh, yeah, important. And uh, two Bloody Marys, please. Three, just okay. in case someone joins us. Three Bloody Marys, some jugs mm-hmm. of mimosas, some coffee with whiskey, and a nice platter for nine, please, of, of uh, brunch. All right. Thank you. Uh, char- you can charge that to me. How much will that cost me, my good, my good man? Uh, actually, um, charge that to bring up the receipt and our friend will pay for it when you get here. Oh, thanks, okay. Sucks. <laughs> thanks, Sucks. It's this one thing Agar loves. How much? A hundred? About a hundred and fifty when it comes to you. <laughs> no, I think, I think Luke was trying to barter there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. A hundred? Was that ten, Ben? A uh, hundred and fifty for all that? Um... I'll mark it down make, now. Add, add some extra fruit onto it. Make it 170. We don't want, we don't want to sell you short. <laughs> All right. Some up extra the, fruit. Up the geeks, Fids. Yeah, there we go. I'll take 170. <laughs> 170 <laughs> credits. What a brunch. Woo. Uh, it's not quite 11,000 for the room, though, is it? No. And no, this is a relatively <laughs> expensive place, remember. And there's nine of us. You're feasting. Yeah, it's got, that's the thing. It's got to set us up for the day. Like when that you is, find that is true. Nine. Yeah, yeah. Actually, where's, so fair. where's the daddiest picture of Agnar I've got? Hang on. Just to set it up. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Um, fantastic. Uh, Soraya uh, finishes the call, whether it's for a data pad or whatever on the wall or something, and she sits back down <coughs> and smiles at Stefan and says, uh, I like to think that the crew think we're... We're very humble and sharing leaders. Let's uh, let's get everyone over. You take uh, you take Kara's room. I'll go and uh, I'll go and get the other lot. Okay. How long how long are they going to be? How long's the seven uh, cup? How long how long's a slice of bread? Uh, I mean, we're, well, we're not paying, but someone's paying. They'll they'll wait around, I suppose. Yeah, they will. Right, I'll meet you back here. <laughs> okay. Cool. And. Uh, so I right, heads off to uh, bang on the door of uh, the crew that, that don't have any of us in it. Okay. The Gerg, um, the Gerg room. Yeah. Um, the door slides open and there are a couple of slightly sleepy looking curious faces. Morning. Hey, Gerg, Johnny, Freya, Sammy. Um, we thought it'd be a really good chance uh, to do some... Uh, team building this morning okay 
Uh, we were going to do that just by uh, drinking mimosas and eating breakfast, if you want to come over to our room. Absolutely. Fantastic. Uh, there might be a PowerPoint presentation, but we're undecided on that yet. But uh, Okay. But be over in 10 minutes, and uh, let's have a nice morning together. Good. And she uh, sort of heads back to the room, leaving them to sort themselves out. Okay. Uh, Stefan will go to the other room. All right. Um, unsurprisingly, <laughs> it's Zoe's open the door. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. Morning. Oh, hey, Zoe, you're right. We, um, we're having some brunch over in our room. Uh, sort out some plans for what we're doing for the day. But obviously, if people have got their own plans, they're more than welcome. But still, brunch is available. Sure. Can you let everyone know? Cat, we've got booze. <laughs> I'll shout past. And Cat is literally wandering past Zoe, pull, pulling on her coat, as, her jacket, as, as she comes past. That's all I needed to hear. And Zoe says, I'll um, drag Kara along the floor. <laughs> Thanks. Much appreciated. Uh, right, I'll see you, see you again. Yeah. Good bit of stand. We have okay. a stand for you and you. I'm glad we did at least some standing tonight. Ah, uh, thanks, Sox. Um, as Kara is roused, um, she will quickly uh, grab her laptop uh, without looking at it at this point and mm -hmm. just chuck some clothes on and get dra literally dragged out by Zoe, I'm guessing. Well, not literally, no. So it's so early. Uh, what time is it? Brunch o'clock. Ah, uh, oh, oh, okay, okay. Hang on a second. And she reaches back for her sunglasses and slips them over her eyes. Says, okay, I'm ready for brunch now. Let's go. Okay. So um, everybody assembles. Um, it's not very long before food and mimosai arrive. Oh, John's here. Hey, John, you all right? Always oh, a pleasure to have you in. Um, uh, hey, John. While John's here, I do want to trail that um, on the 3rd. Anyone that's available on the 3rd, which is a Friday, uh, there's a slight change. Um, the 3rd is now going to be um, Rudy and Tony, part three. So if you're a fan of John and his sexy, sexy voice and his sexy, sexy face... There were yeah. lots of them out there. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of fans. It's so thirsty. I found out... It seems to be that the thirsty floof bitches are also thirsty John bitches as well. <laughs> I think that's probably true. <laughs> it's, 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 if, there were, if it was a Venn diagram, it would just be one circle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not judging. I'm big on it. I'm all for it. Okay, anyway, back to, back to the brunch. <laughs> okay so everyone settles in and starts helping themselves to food and drink uh, Sarah wanders over to Agna with the receipt and says um, Agna uh, yeah you know um, you're seen by everyone as the daddy of the group even Gerg, Gerg calls you Daddy Agnar, you know that, right? Yes. It's a little bit awkward, I know, but... Um, well, could you pay for the brunch, please? We did a lot of the hard work in ordering it and getting you over here. What do you think you could? Can... Can, can we... I'm happy to do it, obviously. Well, thank you. Bye. Yeah. Love you, mate. Hello. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm tax deducted from the Baltic Star business lunches. I'm going to claim my tax back from now on. <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. Oh, let me pull up the Baltic ink. Okay, we've got some money there for it. If you keep all the receipts, you can, when we get back to the Baltic Star, then you can claim against it. Okay. And you can even avoid the VAT. Perfect. Okay, okay. That's all I ask. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for now, though. You're a hero. Everyone loves you. Uh, 
uh, and he'll tuck into some brunch, seeing as he's paying. Seeing he's paying a lot of money for it, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Stefan, not really knowing what he's doing, will ting the side of his uh, mimosa glass. Bloody Mary glass. He'll start with Bloody Mary. <laughs> oh, power to assort, assert his uh, <laughs> difference from the rest of the mimosa sipping crew. Um, firstly, uh, thank you all for coming, and thank you to to Agnar for uh, for a wonderful brunch. Yay! Thank you, Agnar. Uh, we've called we've called you here just to you know outline the outline the plan for today that uh, Soraya's going to take us through. Uh, right now, did you, did you did you do the PowerPoint? Um, Cara, did you do the PowerPoint? She looks over at Carl looks a bit worse for wear, bless her. <laughs> <laughs> looking a bit shocked. I tell you what, who's got a pen? Has anyone got a pen? Full marker, pen, anything uh, similar? No one draw on the wall. We need to... Uh, Carl looks shocked at the idea she might lose the deposit. <laughs> no, don't mess the walls up. Oh, and paper, obviously. Uh, Not just a pen. I'll draw some slides as we go. Uh, you talk, I'll draw. Okay, um... Soraya rather grandiosely stands up on the coffee table um, and she says um, assorted friends and crewmates what a wonderful brunch it's been first of all can we give uh, Agnar another round of applause Stefan just writes ass brunch <laughs> on a piece of paper circles it and uh Sorry, he says, you know, we really want to thank you all for putting your trust in Stefan and myself as the new leaders for now, management. It means a lot to us. Um, Stefan, buddy or pal, you come over here. Uh, Stefan just holds up a finger and says, hey, Kara, wake up and throws throws the pen at Kara's head. <laughs> <laughs> For a clunk. Uh, can you please roll <laughs> a straight dex with um, I don't even know what kind of melee attack. Let's call it improvised. <laughs> yeah, it would be improvised, you're right. Dex with improvised. Uh, I don't think I have improvised. <laughs> three plus your dex. If I fold it down into a sharp point, could it be blade? Stab <laughs> No. It's, it's a dry white pen. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's fair. Um, yeah, so that, that is unfortunately uh, a three plus two for my dexterity, minus three because I don't have improvised melee. Okay. So, so that's, a, that's a two. That's a total of two. <laughs> um, a whole load of eyes watch as this pen sort of flies randomly across the room. So wide of its target that it's literally impossible to tell what you were thrown at. <laughs> Just um, shouting and throwing your pen somewhere. Sarah, Sarah jumps off the table and runs towards Stefan angrily. Stefan! Pay attention! What? And tries to give him a dead arm for the second clonk, I guess. <laughs> okay. Oh, double um, This is a straight um, melee attack, please. Um, with your... Um, dex or strength, your choice. <laughs> okay, minus one for my jack of all trades melee, and a zero for my dex. So minus one roll. Um, that's going to be a six. Seven plus one is six. <laughs> what? Seven minus one is six. Sorry. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> the two worst clunks in, in the history of clunks. This is this is the maths teacher in our group. Yeah, sorry, um, everyone. Okay, so um, with a six, I'm afraid that's a clean miss. Um, it is just too early in the morning for you guys to be right on your top form. Th this, I'm afraid, is swing and a miss. Um, so that's a strike, you know. Oh, oh no! She sort of misses and sort of tumbles over a little bit into into his arms a little bit messily. Whoa, 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 whoa! And he'll, you know, stand her up. You. <laughs> it was a heavy night, but... You, Stefan, are a naughty boy. 
and she pokes him on the nose and goes back over to the table and comes back onto the table again. And says, okay, assorted crewmates, ignore us. That, anyway, look at me now. Um, here's the plan for the day. Um, firstly, we're going to head over to the Traveller's Aid Society. Number one. Have you got that down, Stefan? Uh, no, I need a pen. Anyone got another pen? <laughs> is, that, is that you with a finger up, or is that a, a member of the crew with a member up, Ben? <laughs> so it's you're just lo losing the will to live. Just keeping track. Okay. <laughs> Stefan will walk over and he'll get the pen and he'll write it down. One T S A. T A S. It's hard to get the staff these days. Uh, T S T A S. Oh, yeah, got it. Could this, does someone else want? Down. Does someone else want to write this? I mean, my handwriting's pretty bad anyway. I don't know if I can read that. <laughs> Majestic. No, no volunteers. Me so TAS first. Yep. yep. Uh, number one and a half. Uh, ben resplends. Excellent. One second. God, look at that. He's like the son of Bast. It's uncanny. There you go. Uncanny. Cheers, everyone. Um. And thank you, socks. So number one, TAS. Number two, um, Stelt. Two, stealth. Um, we need to stick figure. <laughs> yeah, drop a snake. Drop a couple of snakes. Snake. Yeah, drop a couple of stick snake. Just a squiggly line. I think that's out of scale, Stefan. That snake's very big. Um, we're going to go over to stealth after, and so we're going to introduce ourselves at TAS with the business, and then we're going to have words with uh, stealth and find out where it's at. We're not going to find him a, a new place. A lot of you know that he asked us to find a place for him. We found a place, but we want it for us. And so uh, we're just going to see where he's at, I guess. Anyone got any questions? Good night, John, by the way. Any questions? Good night, buddy. No? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I've got one. Is that everything? Uh, no, number three. Is questions at the end or questions after every... Uh, well, uh, well, let's do it at the end. You might have forgotten Number about three. that. Uh, let's go two and a half of two A Suda. If she's there, we'll just check in on her. If we run into Suda. Suda. Uh, number three. Uh, PSP. Um, I think... I hope that's okay with... Uh, no, <laughs> which has the six with the line underneath. Uh, <laughs> number nine. Um, yes, yeah, so I think... You guys, like, you're all welcome to the others, but I think for the PSP, I hope you don't mind. We're just going to stick to um, myself, uh, Stefan, Agnar, and Kara, if that's okay with, with you guys for that one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's at 2 p.m. sharp. That's at 2 p.m. sharp. So you guys got fr free time for the rest of you, okay? Free time. Can you write free time for everyone else on that, please, Stefan, so they know? Uh, R&R. Yeah, R&R, &R, yeah. Others, yeah. So that time is yours. Um, and then at some point in the evening, there's a policeman, uh, who might come back to talk to us. Um, if any fuzz, if any local fuzz talk to you guys, um, not a word, yeah? Not a word. We know this. We're all friends. We've been working together for a long time. Not a word. Not a word. There's nothing, yeah? Nothing. <laughs> I love the fact, you know, you're, you're running essentially three different legitimate businesses at this point, <laughs> and your general instructions to start are... If the Rosas show up, <laughs> not the trap shot. <laughs> Don't say a thing. Number four, Popo. Uh, <laughs> question of someone, picture of someone doing that. Um, if any of you want to go, if, you, if you're at a loose end, may we suggest um, the Varga Bar near our new venue. Go and befriend him, you know. I, I believe it's a, it's a feast day today, isn't it, Agna? I think it's a Varga feast day. Uh, every day's feast day in a Varga bar. So you'll find out what it is. Go and have a nice drink. Have a good time. Um, tell them you're part of the Baltic Star. Um, otherwise, wander around. If you get in trouble, let us know. Um, I hope you might be available if we need you. Um, does anyone fancy coming with us to uh, to the Trevor's Aid Society before we open the floor to questions? Sounds good. Um, if you want us, we're here. 
Zoe's always looking for somewhere to go. So. But she's only going to watch what people like Kara and Kat do. Um, particularly, I guess, Kat. But if, if Kara's going, Zoe will normally. Oh, in fact, Kat, Kat, Zoe, do you want to come with us? I don't think you... This, this, this could be interesting for you, Kat. Do I see you're a bit of a... As, as you're going to be in the new role as a pilot yourself, interesting to sort of make friends with the Traveller's Aid group. Zoe, always good as well. I'm sure the two of you would like to come with us. Sure. Fantastic. Um, everyone else, enjoy the rest of your brunch. Any more questions? Uh, I have I have a quick point, by the way, Stefan will say just before we uh, before we take any questions or call it for call it for the day. Um, I think, firstly, last off at the end of the day, we'll have another bit of a debrief and you know catch up as we did the other night, just to make sure everyone's feeling good about where we are as a as a team as a unit. Um, and secondly, there we have heard some concerns from the crew that. Um, perhaps there aren't as enough enough branches as as there there need to be, or there have been under previous management, and so there will be a variety of branches in between these these points. So don't worry, we'll we'll send out the invite invites. Make sure you're available, you know, during your R and R time or any other time of the day for the necessary branches to get us through this. That's all. I'm Any questions? <laughs> just, just assume it's just assume it's a brunch unless you're told otherwise. That's a, that's a good policy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, poor old Ben is having uh, one of those nights, bless him. Right. There's a. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, to, to be fair, I, I I sort of felt this was going to come after we did the mortgage negotiation night. Um, that at some point there was going to be. Minutes of the last meeting night, <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, but yes, uh, Sammy wants to know and speaks up uh, if there is any um, need for her to come along to the PSP meeting. Do you need a geologist for that? Oh, that would be. I mean, we always need a geologist. Sammy. But you know, Stefan's only alive because of you, Sammy. Usually, or more, more than one occasion. Yeah, we would love to have you there if you can meet us um, outside the office at um, ten to ten to two. That would be spot on. If you're happy to. All right. Where, where's the meeting? Um, oh, I sit there. I sit there. Oh, I've got to go back now. Um, so you don't have to look it up. The meetings at their facility yes. out in the desert. Oh, yeah. oh grief, yeah. Um, how far away is it? We talked about this back in the day. A couple of hours. Okay. Mm. I'll tell you what. We'll organise transport um, for twelve, but quarter to twelve, just in case of traffic. And mm. uh, yeah, and we'll tell yeah, you where. Arms crossing. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Careful. Actually, that's a good. Sorry, that's a good point. Just very quickly, Ben. Last night, um, Rat came back with us, didn't he, for a drink at the bar, or did they not? Yes. Where Where are they? Did they go home, or are they? They They They're still about. Yeah. Okay. He was passed out on someone's floor. <laughs> no, just um, <laughs> milling about. They They um They have a. Well, frankly, it's a fairly substantial RV with them. Fairly substantial hangover. That's fair. Plus, also, they are grown up, so you know, they could find their own accommodation if they need to. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to uh, look after everyone. Adults. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But also, also okay. there, there, there are very few people who would um, who would object to sharing their quarters with um, with those particular individuals. Oh, especially not the resplendent rack. Exactly. What a guy. <laughs> yeah, there's two, there's two types of Daddy Agnar, that's absolutely sure. All right. <laughs> so your your immediate objective is to go to TAS, yep. and you're taking Zoe and Kat with you. Yes. Um, then we'll probably give um, Rack a call along the way, just to make sure everything's 
call for a lift over on his way home. Well, hopefully, not because he needs to drop us back again. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, and then we then we'll see after TAS, I guess. Okay, all right. Then I think that's a place where we need to take our break. Fantastic choice. Yes, that sounds like a good, good plan. Because we haven't actually done that yet. <laughs> no, we've gone long. Brunch is an exciting thing. It was nice to have a presentation. Mm. <laughs> right. Presentation. Present. Yeah, there were probably pie charts. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. Like, um, how much brunch should be in a day. Here's a day. Here's how much brunch is. This is not brunch. Yeah. This is brunch. I mean, to be, this is to be fair, since, since that would be like a solid pie chart, the brunch <laughs> portion of the day, it's not really on a point having it as a pie chart if it's just going to be solid. No, exactly. I mean, especially if you're not going to have pie at brunch. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and, and then I think you'd have to agree what actually constitutes pie, wouldn't you? 3.14. Normally, right. on that on that mathematical bombshell, should, should go away for five minutes. I'm, I don't I'm know. I'm a maverick, all I, I say twenty two divided by seven is close enough. What for for the length of break? <laughs> for both pi and the length of break. Turn off fit everything in. Right, we'll see. You, we'll see you all in some minutes. Don't go anywhere. We can. We're not your mums, but you know, come back. Yeah, please. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Bring brunch. Bring brunch. Pack the pack brunch. <laughs> Remember the toast. Meat.
close this bit here and we should be here on our empty screen. Hello everyone, I hope you can hear us. Welcome back to the second part of tonight's Boys in the Baltic Star. It's a late second half, but that's okay because we're all together in love. And the reason why we're all together in love is because it's the most, well, apart from you, and you will be when, <laughs> when we start the toast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the yeah, man the man that binds us all together is this fine man on screen right now, um, who was our barman for about a week and a half in game. <laughs> Before he was dragged off on a mission he was ill-equipped for uh, by Ewan. Was it by, no, it wasn't by you. And left to die while Ewan was off killing gardeners. That bit's true. Yeah. <laughs> and Soraya tried to save him, but her medical skills were terrible. And uh, he died a hero to the cause in a very confused mission that was not our high point. It really wasn't. So we, we owe him a lot. And uh, we sort of pay this back by saluting him and celebrating him as the icon of the game, quite rightly. And at the moment, and hopefully just for this week, I think, I think I think we should do some gambling at the start of next week or something, guys. I think we should uh, move, okay. see if we can move it on. Um, are we happy with that, Ewan? Yeah, yeah, I was going to remind you of it at the break, actually. Thank but you. I completely forgot. That's all right. Everyone remember. We'll, uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll work something out to pass it on next time. Um, so for the last time, you've heard it here first. Um, I will give the toast for now. But... For what I hope is not the last time, we're going to do it properly by um, respecting the man, by holding our glass up for the full length of the toast. It's a sign of respect where he's from. The planet that he's from, they this is what they did. You've got it easy. Their toast used to be like an hour and a half long <laughs> and you still have to hold it at full arm's length. If you're getting a flight length. Straight out. <laughs> is that fair well, that's how they got the forearms <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, yeah, that's, that's a good, very good point his whole childhood is standing for toasts um, that's so good Ben um, so I wrote as, as it's uh, the last one I wrote another special poem for him a, a, a toast and I hope you will appreciate this uh, very special uh, poem so if, if you'll bear with me um, it goes back to a time um when um, Greyhill was um, on the Baltic Star and there was a bit of an influx. When, you know when we were moving um, passengers around a little bit? We did a couple of runs where we had to take a couple of passengers with us. With Zoe. And it, 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 it refers back to that time. So, um, Greyhill. Somebody said, you've got a new friend. Does she pay you better than I can? There's a big back sky over my corner. I know where you're at. I bet she's around. I know it's stupid. I've just got to see it for myself. I'm in the corner watching you serve her. Oh. I'm right over here. Why can't you see me? Oh. I'm giving it all, but you're not the girl that you're serving. Oh, I keep standing on my own. I keep standing on my own. I'm just going to stand all night. I'm so missed out. I thought I was in a line. Tequilas and broken bottles. The bar's spinning around in circles. And I'm in the corner watching you serve her. Oh, I'm right over here. Why can't... Oh, you have seen me. Thank you. Uh, two tequilas and three beers. Thank you very much, Greyhill. Uh, to the late, great Greyhill Bast. <laughs> to Greyhill Bast. <laughs> Greyhill Bast. I have to say, Luke, that your poetry has some nice musicality to it. Thank you. I'm a learned man. I'm a, I'm a patron of the arts and the music. And... Um, while I'd like arts. to think that uh, <laughs> that hurts, uh, while I like to think that um, I don't steal, I like to think that the wide breadth of music helps educate me. Uh, to Greyhill, to Greyhill. <laughs> it, it moved fits so much that she's uh, taken on a German accent. Mine, mine ways. To Greyhill. To Greyhill. To Greyhill, indeed. 
And Socks, yes, that was because uh, you posted that in the uh, in the Discord. <laughs> there is um, one little <clears throat> thing before we resume. I need to mention because I only learnt it today. I don't actually know when it happened, but the f everyone may already know this. But did you notice the the town where they filmed Jaws, the town that stood in for <coughs> Amity? Amity, yeah. Has just appointed a new um, chief of police. And it's one of the kids who pretended to be a shark with the fake fin in the movie. Oh, really? No way. Yeah. That is so yeah. cool. One of those kids is now the chief of police of the town where Jaws was filmed. I hope oh. they wear the, uh, the fin. <laughs> they introduce it as part of the new police uniform. Uh, yeah. It's just absolutely amazing to me. I'll drink to that, Ben. I'll oh, drink to yeah. That, yeah. That's that is well worthy of, of a drink. Right, so, you guys, six of you, are heading down to the TSA, apparently. TAS, you know what I mean. Oh, that's because you were looking at... <laughs> you're looking at, <laughs> Steph, you're looking at <laughs> Stefan's notes, that's a problem. <laughs> oh, it does oh, oh, it. <laughs> this and monkey bars. Okay. Right. Thanks, Vince. Um, <laughs> well done, thank you, Socks. I know, I know, Luke always appreciates it. Gives me a chance to flex, show off, um, show off my so, work. Well, this late into the evening, I think just the opportunity to stretch the muscles. Well, <laughs> yeah, I was just cramping quite badly, to be honest. <laughs> Especially after the toast. After holding the mug. <laughs> yeah, can we always put it there, please? <laughs> All right. So you make you you make your way down to the ground floor of the complex, and it's only one sort of dome over within the within the domed part of the city, and you walk up to the entrance of the TAS, which looks exactly as it did last time. If you remember, there's sort of a an open lobby area with a reception kiosk. Um, it is unmanned. Uh, was there a notice board in here, Ben? Are there any, oh, are there any women there, though? Mm. Uh, you... <laughs> Stefan will turn to Soraya. What do you want to do? Should we can have a look around or just grab someone's attention? Um... I mean, we're not members, but... Oh. Why, don't, why don't you um, have a look around first? Um... She looks over at Kara that's tried to find a, a seat in the corner to open a laptop. Because <laughs> we rush up in such a thing that she's not had a chance to look at the results. Okay. Uh, so I will say to Stefan, let's have a look. It looks like Kara could do with a few minutes. If you see someone, you've got a very good way with catching people's attention, Stefan. It's one of your strengths. <laughs> it's funny because I try and have a very good way of not catching people's attention. <laughs> <laughs> You're just too charming. Thanks, I guess. Let's, uh, yeah, let's have a look around. Check out notice board. notice board. See if there's any missing cats. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sort of thing. Some, uh, uh, bookshelves we'll for sale. over to the notice board. All right. Um, the notice board is um, presenting a number of transport opportunities for people with their own craft to move things on and off world. People looking for... Um, transport for themselves or for various um, packages and, and loads of goods. Um, can you roll for me a 2d6? Uh, go for it, sir. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to do it. But... Are you trying to make use of my... my We're my, both there, aren't we? Making use of my lucky dice. Yeah. Definitely. Well, um, you were a fool to do so. It's a five. I was trying to make you feel better about okay. them, you know, eventually evening out. I, I picked up the wrong ones. These aren't <laughs> these aren't the weighted ones. These five. aren't the dice you're looking for. <laughs> Not the dice. Okay. So. All right. Uh, everything on the board that you can see 
is only open to TAS members or is things that you can't fulfill anyway without your own ship. Okay. I mean, Stefan turned to Soraya, we're not actually... <laughs> we're, t we're taking the cruise liner back, right? So we'd have to... Any job we do take, I guess, couldn't originate here. But no, you, unless you, it's you, carry on cargo. That that I I've watched that whole series of films and that was never one of them. <laughs> carry on cargo. <like laughs> <that. laughs> it should be. It should be. Yes. I would definitely watch that. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. What films? Ah, uh, well, you know, I spent twelve years basically on my own. Oh, those old, not more of those old Terran. Yeah, do you know I'm a sucker for the old Terran, oh. the old Terran stuff, the old sports, the old films. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Still, they were quite fun. There was a man that went rah, 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 quite a lot. I quite liked him. Sounds like Agnar. It, it reminded me a lot of Agnar. Um, have we ever thought about? Have we ever thought about membership? Uh, it would be a bold new management decision. Well, uh, I guess it's an investment. We're investing in our future. Mm. If they I don't us... know if it's open. Is it open? I don't know if it's open. Uh, why don't you? Why I don't, don't know if we're the qual the type of person that they're looking for. Well, speak for yourself. Why don't you ding a bell or something? See if, <laughs> see if unmanned becomes manned. <laughs> there doesn't appear to be a bell, but behind the. Um, reception desk. There is an open area with various tables and chairs, and there are a couple of people um, sitting down on their own in different places, um, doing some work. You know, checking a screen, responding to a message, that kind of thing. Go on, Stefan. Uh, okay, come on then. Let's let's go. <laughs> Stefan had a wander over. Um, hopefully with Soraya and uh, sort of look around and I, I guess he'll try and make eye contact and he'll look for the first person that makes eye contact with him. Okay. But first, being. They might be Barker. Can you roll a streetwise for me, please, with um, intellect? Yes. Cooey! Uh, that is a six plus two is an eight. Okay. Um, there seems a likely sort of chap um, sitting in the corner um, as the poem goes. And <laughs> the... After a moment, he does glance up and lock eyes with you. Um, so you've got his attention. But he doesn't say anything. Uh, Stefan will sort of, you know, raise his head as you're indicating that you're probably going to talk to somebody and walk over to the likely lad. Uh, <coughs> um, hi, do you do you work here? Are you? Uh, no, just a member. Um, don't think I've seen you before. No, no, no. We're uh, we're we're new on world. We we just came in, just came in the other day, but we've quite, been quite busy with a bit of business. Uh, but potentially, potentially looking for some work, I suppose. Soraya, where are we? Uh, what's the general plan? Where are we heading next? <clears throat> Back to Kiko, aren't we? And then, and off into the uh, is it the rift? I, I believe they called it the Big Blue. We're on a long journey. Um, hello, my friends. Um, yes, we've... Um, uh, thank you for speaking to us. Um, as my friend said, we are new. We are new on planet. We're, we're looking at um, starting a starting a business up here, but um, moving on. We, we, we travel a lot, you see. Um, we are travellers. We are travellers, but um, we never became members of this fine organisation. Oh, what did you say? Well, <laughs> is that something, as, as a member yourself, is that something that can be remedied, do you know? 
it is, though the entry requirements are fairly steep. Um, what what are the entry requirements? Let's see if uh, we've we've got very interesting pasts and we've got very deep pockets. Deep pockets will help. Um, you also need to be proposed and seconded by existing members. Those members have to be willing to propose and second you within a single chapter of the society. So you have to assemble them in the same place at the same time. And then, of course, they have to turn up to the actual meetings of that chapter in order to propose you. Oh, sounds like a long process. Well, if you line everything up in advance, the actual process could take just a couple of hours. But yes, ultimately, Do you'd have to be voted on and the price you pay if you don't get lucky you don't get it back would um would we have to be present at said voting yes uh, i don't suppose you happen to know the uh the next when the next meeting of this chapter is due um i don't know to the exact date but it's a few months away i think oh, okay Well, but, but you are um, spacefarers. Oh, I, I spent um, twelve years working for the scout service, and um, my friend here, um, you've been you've travelled around a, an awful lot, haven't you, Stefan? Uh, I used to captain a navy vessel. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's no, not... that, that's. That's good. Can you roll a deception check for me quickly, please? Oh, a what check? A deception with intellect. Oh, it's technically true. Yeah, it was the only, it was the only one on the <laughs> ship. <laughs> I mean, there was no crew on board, but it's technically true. <laughs> yes, but, but you're going to have to try and say this without grinning at him. Or yeah, no, that's, that's, that's fair, I suppose. Yeah. Deception with... With intellect, please. Okay, Stefan well, always grins right. when he oh, tells his story. That's a good flat roll, though. That's a ten. Oh, oh yeah, about... he absolutely, you know, he's wide-eyed with enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a very high difficulty check. Because <laughs> um, as you rightly say, it is technically true. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yes, he, he, he says, and you're essentially independent now. Uh, yes, we, we, have our, uh, we have our own ship, we have a crew. Um, we have an assortment of... Uh, of skills amongst our crew there's a we've got a, a wide variety of sciences and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of ex-military experience a former general don't you know a scout yeah. a philosopher a philosopher the most important member of the crew a geologist geologist some, some, geologists, some uh, biologists some biologists some xenologists mm. all the quite, quite a quite an eclectic set of uh, skills if we do say so ourselves and we do yeah, we do. Yeah. I mean, the the ship you have is it capable of? I mean, would it be possible for you to guarantee the protection of valuable people? How many people? At least six. Probably seven. Um, quick out of character question, Ben, the upgrades that are happening to our ship, do we know, are they likely to be beneficial to such a request? They certainly wouldn't interfere with that request. <laughs> okay. Uh, Stefan, I say, yeah, yeah, of course, we've, uh, we've a wide, how many berths have we got? I'd lose count. Hang on a sec, so, uh... I can tell you, give me a second. I was going to she'll, get, she'll check out the spec. I was going to get the graphics up for everyone. In fact, I thought that might be quite nice. It's been oh, a while since we've had it out. I just need to find it. Bear with me, if I'm sorry. And whilst it's she's nice looking idea. that up, Stefan will say, and we've even we're even going to get um, one of those toasted sandwich makers installed. Uh, you hear Kara shout over from the back. Two, possibly two. Probably. I mean, next you'll be telling probably, me that probably the one. clock is digital. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, listen, it might not sound like a lot to you, but when you uh, when you wake up out of a 
a deep slumber and a week's worth of space journey with nothing to do. Oh. Taste the sandwich is where it's at. Oh, there it is. I have need to arrange passage for a largish party. And I'm perfectly prepared to move people on a scheduled ship or a private ship. But if they go on a scheduled ship, they need protection. You know, they would need people to travel with them and keep them safe. If they go on a private ship, then I just need to vet the crew and the and the quarters and conditions to make sure they'd be safe. So, if you can either give me a a guarantee of a a private ship leaving here as soon as practicable with independent crew and you know no no other passengers who might be a threat or you'll be happy to travel with us to our destination and provide protection of course assuming you your references and track records check out um what um where are they looking to travel to if i may ask so that changes what the offer could be i guess um we're hoping to leave for Geeka. Ah. And we have arranged tentatively to travel on the seamstress. Oh, we know it well. Up the geeks. Um, but it's a very large, very busy ship. And we would need to at least try to guarantee the protection of our people. It's um it's funny you should mention that because we're um we're actually we're quite close with the with the head of security for the seamstress. Oh yes. Is that so? I mean, I say quite close. We have a working relationship, a good working relationship with the uh, with the head of security. Certainly. Oh, that that could be very suitable. Hmm. It does appear. It would appear so. Wouldn't you say, Sawai? Um, I feel that um, basically we helped her out. We came over on the seamstress, um, our ships in Geeka, and we helped out uh, the security on the way over. And I feel like, yeah, we've grown quite close to the security and she trusts us quite a lot. So, yeah, we'd that be... That sounds excellent. In fact, it's heading back in the next couple of days, isn't it, Stefan? The seamstress, if I remember correctly. It is. It is indeed. I believe. I believe we're already booked on. But we did. We did, in fact, save the lives of at least one person whilst whilst aboard the seamstress. Mm. Though to be fair, you also took the life of at least one person. So mm. you know, swings and roundabouts. That was in order to save the life of the other. I mean, person. yeah, not 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 a good person. <laughs> we never kill good people. Wow. Villains and gardeners. That's our. Yes. That's our target. <laughs> um. Do you mind if I ask who the uh, who the people being transported are? I understand if you can't tell us, obviously. I, I'm I'm afraid until such time as we've checked you out, I can't reveal that. Well, that's fair. I'd um, I'd be happy for us to uh, to hand over our. Any uh, information you'd need to to check us out, certainly. Um, I'd have to obviously speak to speak to the rest of our crew before we committed them. But realistically, they don't uh, they don't need to be involved. I suppose they are. They could just merely be passengers, and we could uh, arrange the security between. Uh, I suppose the four of us arrive. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Maybe five. Maybe six, but you know, we we can limit certainly limit the numbers um, if they're not happy to hand over their information. If they are, then you could have information on some of the passengers as well, I guess. Um, if we 
if you're interested. If we wanted to to take the deal, we would need arrangements to provide 24 hour protection in the area outside the staterooms for all of our passengers. So realistically, you'd need a minimum of six people able to stand duty. Yeah, eight hour shifts. What about, um, we could do that. What, what about inside? If we're, if we're talking outside, can you guarantee inside or, you know, cause we've, not saying we've had issues on the seamstress before, but our, our passengers are unlikely to want to open the doors to their staterooms during the transit. Certainly, but that doesn't guarantee that somebody can't gain access. Well, I would hope that the the only way to easily gain access to a stateroom would be through its door and that you would provide significant deterrent to anyone trying to do that without permission i mean we we certainly would um but i think you'd be surprised at the number of uh, the number of ways to gain access to a stateroom aboard the seamstress if i'm <laughs> if i'm totally honest with you i this is, it's your business, and I completely understand that, and we are more than happy to fulfil security outside the room, I think. And he'll look over to Soraya. But I'd, it would uh, it would pain me for something to happen and for me to, not, to have not said something. Yeah. If our job is to stand outside the front door, make sure no one comes in, and if they need to go to the cafe or something, we walk with them. Um, I'm absolutely fine with that. If I'm doing that for eight hours a day, eight hours of that, eight hours of sleeping, eight hours of buckyball, I'm a happy bunny. That seems very sensible. And uh, provided you can provide that level of manpower, then I think we can come to an arrangement. Should we do it? Should we offer it, Stefan? I think we could do it, right? How much? How much are we talking? We would be happy to pick up the cost of your transport, of course. And on top of that, shall we say... Five thousand each per... You know, you know, per guard for the trip. Co correct me if I'm wrong, Sarai. Do we already have our uh, transport arranged, or did we have one way passage? Yeah, yeah. You you don't necessarily have passage booked. Okay. Are you muted, Luke, apparently? Thank you. It's because I was eating a crisp, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, Sarah says, um, uh, so 5,000. If we were just to, if it was a job just to sit there, guaranteed sitting there for, for a week as security, 5,000 would be reasonable. But people only hire security if there's at least some level of concern. Thanks. Good. Um, so it feels a little low, I guess, compared to previous stuff we've done. It's not disrespectfully low, but uh, 
it feels to me that really for the expertise and numbers we can offer it should be a little bit higher we were thinking more about I don't know for a trip 10 maybe 10 per person roll a persuade for me please with um, intellect or social your choice definitely intellect because she is a bit common which I love about her but the TAS or the TSA as we now call it doesn't feel like the way to be <laughs> to be like that I don't think they roll with common. That was a good roll, though. Um, we're back on form. These are the good dice. 11 plus 2. Ooh. 13. Keep these close. Those are the dice you're looking for. <laughs> those ones can go away, the other ones. Um, he, um, he thinks about it for a second, and then he says... No, I think... I think if you can't do it four or five, I'll have to look elsewhere. Oof. Are you planning to get them from here to the ship and from to the seamstress and from the seamstress to where they're going at the other end? At this end, it's handled. We'll make arrangements to move them off the seamstress at the other end. Quick, uh, out of character question, Ben. How much, roughly, doesn't have to be exact, are we talking for passage on the seamstress back to Geeka? Um... Feels like an amount, to be honest. Yeah. Well, it's going to be. What with all the free skiing? Oh, all this. Stefan's already viewing. I can see Stefan's already thinking about that. It's that. It's that woman that fancies me still there on the slopes, waiting for my return. Well, but he can't. You know, if we take up this this gig, I ain't got eight hours no, a day for no skiing. pleasure to be had. Uh, be eight hours a day for pleasure. It'll all, all be business. No, it won't. It's only business for eight hours a day. Um, it would be... Plenty of time for schmoozing now. Um, around about of the order of um, 6,000-ish per parsec. So I think this is a three parsec hop, so about eighteen thousand ahead. So then, when it becomes twenty, so it becomes twenty-three thousand ahead is actually not disgusting. Take it, it gets us home, and it's eight hours a day. I can sit there. I can. Uh, I can put it's my free passage back to the ship plus bunch money plus a little bit extra. If if Sarai can have. Um, 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. to herself, so she can watch the Bucky. She'll take the evening, mm -hmm. and then she can have a little bit of a sleep. She, she, she'll roll with that. She'll say, how about, how about you, Stefan? I think we can do it. That's eight, eight, and eight. Eight on, eight sleep, and eight to yourself, and you get paid for it. Which is, you know. And he says, and I'm entirely happy um, to pay for up to 10 guard escorts as long as they're all available on call as needed hmm. I wouldn't want to uh, quietly I guess or I would say Stefan I, I don't I wouldn't want to force it on to all of our crew no you know what I mean yeah. people would need to agree to it because there's some that we definitely it's not fair to but I feel like we could Get between six and eight, I feel. Well, Sammy deserves a rest, if nothing else. Exactly. <clears throat> so Zoe, Zoe, will yeah. get, Zoe will get bored with nothing else to do. Johnny, Johnny will true. do what's need be. Johnny will do it. He's used to standing around in corners, isn't he? Waiting for people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, yeah, he, he, he would do it. Yeah. Um, Gerg might have some actual um, ethical problems. Yes, of course. It's yeah. not. It's not really enough to simply say... I'm that lousy a shot, therefore I <laughs> no harm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah he doesn't Cat, want to be He might be a bit out of Cat's uh, skill set, maybe. 
But maybe not. Maybe she'd just rather party. I mean, she's not particularly skilled with such things. <laughs> uh, right. The others, Rose, Rose, Rose and herself look after herself and look out for suspicious people, but should yeah. need to be with someone beefy. I mean, you could probably use Cat and Rose in the rotation, I would imagine, yeah. but you'd want to put them with, with a Zoe. With or a Zoe with or a, an Agnar or someone like an that. Agnar so, yeah. or someone who's, who's got a bit of, yeah. So I think we could get seven. I think we could definitely get seven in a rotation. Let's do it. Let's take it. We'll take it. Yeah, we'll take it. Oh yeah, we'll sleep in the skanky rooms feeds and give Sammy a nice state room and pay for a spa ticket and make sure she recuperates nicely. It's, it's the least that we owe her. Excellent. So, um, the, the chap stands up, offers his hand to shake, says, uh, excellent, I'm Marcus. Oh, Marcus who, may I ask? Uh, von Cotswold. Oh, not one of the Von Cotswold family. From Geeker. Um, it's not the family in that sense. It's not a family name, no. Oh. oh it's sort of an honorific. Ah, oh, I see. Oh, uh, that makes sense. There's a lot of Von Cotswolds in the TAS, I believe. That makes sense. Oh, well, a pleasure to meet you, Marcus. Um, this is Stefan, and my name's Soraya. Nice to meet you both. Mm. Um, pass me the details of the individuals we'll be working with. I'll have them quickly vetted and we'll set up the, the, the deal. Can we uh, can we pass you four now and then with uh, or Sarai, do you want to make a quick call and check everyone's all right? Yeah, I guess uh, at this point we can head back to the uh, the seats or something in the, uh, not in the nice area for the TAS, but for the other yeah. people. Um, yeah, you, 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 can, you can essentially take a few minutes to check in with people and make your decisions now. So we'll take Stefan, Soraya, Agnar, Kara as red. Now, of course, those that we don't pay, we need to pay their transport, or they need to pay, or we need to pay their transport back, don't we? So you'll need to you'll need to pay a ticket for anyone you can't use in the rotation. Right. Let's do this quick, but let's take it in turns, Stefan. Okay. Um, I'll call um, Zoe. Oh, she's with us. Zoe's with you. Hey, Zoe. Um, these guys are going to give us free tickets back on the seamstress to Geeka if uh, for anyone that's willing to stand guard for eight hours a day outside some schmo's room. You happy to do it? Yeah. Cool. So is him. You'll go, Stefan. Uh, Stefan, I call up Johnny. Okay. Uh, hey, Johnny. Do you, do you fancy a... Uh... A free ride back to Geeker on the on the seamstress. Uh, yes. Uh, cool, perfect. We've um we've lined up a security detail for uh some travellers. We don't know on on the seamstress back to Geeker. Stand outside the room. Make sure no one enters. Make sure they're safe. Keep an eye out for suspicious characters. You in? Yep. Sounds right up my alley. I, agree. Nice. I love I love Johnny because you can kind of mistreat him in a way. I don't mean that in the wrong way. <laughs> because he will he's just really matter of fact about it. And he's not la di da. He's just like, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'd really like we'll, that. Um, we we'll have to pass on your uh, your details so you can be security checked. Are you all right with that? Uh sure, I'd be curious to find out what it says actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, we all... I'll see if, I'll see what we can do. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, no I will call up um, Rose, I guess, because she's not okay. with us. Because it's Cat that's with us, isn't it? So Cat is with yeah. you, yeah. Hey, Rose, you're right. Uh, yeah, good. Thanks. Uh, you remember um, the? Uh, we're, we're heading back on the. We're planning to head back on the seamstress in a couple of days, right? And um, we've been offered a 
job to stand guard outside of uh, some some large dar people's room. Um, those that are willing to do it get get their tickets paid in an extra five five k. If we always banged you with someone like Zoe or Agnar or someone like Beefy, would you be happy to do that for for a thirty or day all the way back? Just keep an eye out for wrong ones. Sure. I mean, the rest of the time I can still sleep, eat, lie in the pool, right? 16 hours a day is yours all the way back. You get a free ticket and five grand at the end. Easy. Happy Shit, I didn't days. tell Johnny about the five grand. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny's just like, yeah, I'm going to trip back. Okay. Do you want to try with any of the others, uh, Stefan? Uh, who'd who'd be good for it? Do you think? Well, we well, you haven't asked Cat yet. Yeah. You Did... haven't asked Sammy, but it's probably not really her cup of tea. No. And Gerg yeah. and Rick are the other ones. Who probably? Um, Gerg is unlikely. To get... Rick, you could ask. Yeah, Rick might go for it. Um, whilst that conversation is happening. Stefan will suddenly think, oh, I didn't tell Johnny about the money, and he'll message him and say, oh, by the way, you get <laughs> you get 5,000 credits as well. Oh, man. How Ste- Stefan has changed. Oh, he's too uh, Session one, Stefan, would have offered him a grand. Well, his management now is... Going, oh, you know, this is a story. Book. Such I, a story I think Stefan, Stefan. One session, session one, Stefan, sorry, would have probably said... Um, I can get you your ticket for 2k <laughs> yeah. if you take this job. Yes. And would then have taken 2,000 out of Stefan and given him a free ticket. Ah, oh, so yeah. much so. Yeah. Well, the crew's been a good influence on him. Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah. <coughs> who, do you want, who do you want me to call then, Sorry. Excuse me. Sorry. Why don't you give, uh, give Rick a call? Okay. Hang on. Yeah, just... ring, 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 ring. Oh, I yeah. like that. I like that. That's... Just doing a bit of LARPing or something. I like yep. that. That's good, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> hi. Uh, hi, Rick. Stefan here. Um, we're, we're just looking back at uh, travel to, to Geeka. Get back to the, so the Baltic Star. There's Rick. Gotcha. We've, we've got a job, a potential job lined up that's uh, got some free tickets for us as well as um, a bit of cash. Uh, potential security detail we're going to look after some people make sure they're safe in the room stand watch for max eight hours a day and then pass off to someone else are you interested or would you rather just pay for the ticket and and be home can you um roll a persuade for me please with boon and um Ooh. and intellect Ooh, that's a good job for the boon. That is a seven. I'll lose the one. Uh, plus one for persuade and plus zero for intellect. So that's an eight. An eight, okay. Um, Rick um, thinks about it for a second and then he says, Sure, I'm up for that. Okay, perfect. We'll um, we'd have to we're, we're gonna have to pass on some some details to the to the guy for the job. He just wants to you know security first, make sure we're all on the level. Are you alright with that? Yeah, fine. Cool. Uh, thanks. So, essentially, you're not trying, um, Sammy or Gerg. You're. You haven't asked Freya. Oh, we're not asked Freya. No, she doesn't strike me. Fair She's, enough. She could have horrible flashbacks on board the ship. That's where her colleague died. Yeah. Was murdered. Yeah. And you haven't asked Cat. No. But you've you've got. Is that seven now on board? Johnny's on board, Zoe's on board, and We've got eight. Rick's on We've board. done two each. Stefan, Soraya, Agnar, Kara, Zoe, Johnny, Rose, and Rick would be eight. Right, that's eight. So the only one you haven't asked who's an option is Cat. It's Cat, yeah, exactly. Um, 
So Raya will sit down next to Cat and say, "Hey, Cat, how you doing?" Good, thanks. Um, so we're heading back on the uh, the seamstress in a couple of days. And, Always love to see new places. Well, you know, uh, maybe we'll have a different room this time. Probably won't be as good, but um, these guys here, they've offered us a job, which I will make the cost of getting back a lot easier, I guess. And some of us are going to do it. Um, basically, uh, the ones of us that are doing it, for like eight hours a day, we're going to have to stand shift in twos or threes or whatever, outside someone's apartment, their stateroom. Um, just, I don't know why, just keep an eye, make sure no one comes and goes, I guess. Uh, they're a bit nervous about it. They're just heading back to Geeker. Um, the people that are doing it, are getting paid 5k and their tickets paid for now there's legitimately no pressure we've got enough people um to do it. if you're skin we can probably cover it off the ship's money if you because you've just you've, you're new to us and you know but it's up to you really i mean i will tell you you put a gun in my hand i am absolutely lethal and I mean that because it could go anywhere. <laughs> That's what we were worried about. Uh, however, I actually quite like the idea of a bit of excitement. What if, um, because that would make nine, it means there's a bit more freedom. So you wouldn't necessarily need to be the person with the gun. You could be sat across the way, keeping an eye out, pop to the... The vegan brunchery, bring a thing, follow anyone that looks a bit suspicious. Sort of a bit more wandering around, keeping an eye out. Black ops. There are lots of people who've accused me of lots of things in my life. Stealth is not one of the things I've been accused of. But Look at Kara, she achieves um, stealth by the opposite of stealth. <laughs> but, <laughs> truthfully, I was wondering what I'm going to do on the ship anyway. You know, they for whatever reason they won't let me fly it. Well, they should. You're very skilled, cat. I tr I trust it in your hands. Yeah, me too. I think I th I think I should fly it. No, I think so. I bet it's never done a loop the loop before, is it? The seamstress. Well, I mean, probably not. But there are other things I can do other than loops. Although, if, if you did loop while Stefan was on the ski slope. Would he just be like an eternal slope? I have a feeling you'd probably have to do a kind of barrel roll for that. Ah, well, you know, if we can get you on there, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But thank you, that's good. So we can go up to them and say there's nine. So that, that'll cover that. Some pocket money, it's all good. Yep, sounds all right. I mean, I... I don't know how much use I'll be, but I'm certainly happy to try. If, if you were the fourth person, I think it'd be a struggle, but you being there gives some leeway. Sure. And I mean, how dangerous can it be? It's on a liner. It's like, no one ever gets killed on these sort of things. Exactly. Uh, up the geeks. Okay. So I guess we've got a lot then. and. Okay. So with nine selected... The lucky nine. Um, everyone except Freya, Sammy, and Gerg is being volunteered. It feels right. Okay. Um, while that's going on, can um, we find out what Kara found out, please, Ben? Is that something we can you do? You most certainly can. <coughs> so the images that Kara was taking at the warehouse which were fairly extensive in number, have returned nothing at all that looks indicative of any actual information. I know it sounds weird, but it's as if the information that was gathered, all of it, is just random stuff, like graffiti. Okay. Graffiti is not random. How dare you? Don't say it's a... Kara. It's... What I mean is it usually doesn't contain useful information. Oh, 
Oh, you obviously didn't spend four years in the same art college that she did. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first clue? <laughs> Um, so you fire over the details for the nine people yes yeah okay I mean we've checked all of them right? we're not breaching anyone's uh, GDPR oh no but everyone agreed probably most, most importantly you know Stefan's first couple well, of days they, in they management he doesn't want to so, <laughs> so, 20 million so, pound fine the public parts of their records are essentially public to you and you can do what you like with them. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, it's all good. Oh, while that's fold over um, and they're waiting, Kat is going to regale a little tale from her past then. Oh, lovely. All right. Uh, well, just prep that up. Um, the, the speed with which you get the response is impressive. It is literally during the tale that you get a response saying, you're all okay. So. Oh, nice. The gale with the tale. Surprising. <laughs> very, very basic you, check. You are. It, it actually wasn't that basic, but. Mm. Nice. Two nines. Powerful people vouch. <laughs> Two nines. Powerful people vouch for us. <laughs> um, so while you're sitting down literally waiting for the response from the from the person um, to you know agree to the contract terms uh, Kat is um, is musing and more or less staring at her feet sort of kicking them in front of her um, and Zoe asks her what she's thinking about and Kat says, you know what I'm thinking about? This is only the second time I've ever been off Geeker. I don't mean going into orbit, you understand. I mean going to a different system. And the first time... Well, the, the, the first time wasn't really to another system at all. It was... Back when the Commodore and I first knew each other. And we went to fly out to this deep space outpost. A big floating horror show of dust and grime and, and industrial spaces. Uh, we, we went out there to talk to the people there about their food requirements. You know, they were they were intending to stay in deep space, picking up comets and things like that. And uh, and the Commodore wanted to uh, and wanted to get food to them as they came past Geeker each time on their travels. And I can remember flying that trip and thinking, you're literally jumping to a space where there's nothing and hoping that when you get there, there'll be a ship. And despite the fact that that ship was the most disgusting, grimy, unpleasant, ugly, industrial pile of rubbish you've ever seen in your life. When you drop out of the jump and it's right in front of you, you think, oh, well, that's good. It's like it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. <laughs> anyway, I don't know what uh, what made me think of that, but something made me think of that. Car sort of looks up from the laptop while she's going for her research and looks off and says, That's... There's something almost romantic about that. I totally get what you mean. That was nice. That was nice, Kat. Thank you. It's how we and feel with about that. Autism. I think it's probably time we called it for tonight, I'm afraid. Yeah, I think that's a good call. Uh, Fitz, uh, I've got 50, 50 tons of mackerel. 30 tons of shark and 10 tons of slate fish. Ooh. Slate fish is very expensive, so we can't get too much of that. And I, I, and I, I do hope the, um, the, uh, the little mini story that I just did is okay. We, we haven't done one of those before, so I didn't really know what exactly I was aiming for. 
I'm glad it hit, I'm glad it hit you first. <laughs> I was still listening. I was just dealing with the cat. Uh, speaking of the cat, it's time to grab the cat oh, for no. the cat. No way. Oh, is it? Is it cat? Oh, right. Hold yes. on. I'm technically not prepared. Let's have another story from Ben. It's just too many cats in this story. <laughs> A lot of cats. <laughs> A lot of cats. A whole lot of cats. Okay. I have. So if this is your first time, if someone clicks uh, Redeems the Adventure Race Cat, which is normally Sparrow, it must be said, uh, it's tradition, uh, Ben tells a story, an ongoing story of uh, Rose's cat that's about to come aboard the Baltic Star. Yeah, believe it or not, this is chapter 31. What? No, that's ridiculous. Isn't it? That's impossible. I've been doing this a long time. I actually, that's actually shocking to me. Meanwhile, on the Baltic Star, the startup sequence had moved on to avionics and external sensors. One by one, each system started, carefully identifying the exact location and orientation of the ship in space, then scanning and tracking all the objects around it. Among those carefully scanned was a small cat running rapidly along the concourse in front of the ship. Caboodle, Rose's cat, was out on the town. She ran along the concourse with its row of offices and commercial units on her right, the airlocks to the moorings and various observation windows to her left. She was fast, nimble and lithe. Not terribly coordinated, though. On the broad concourse, there were no turns to worry about, but there were a lot of obstacles cargo pallets, luggage, random components waiting to be fitted to ships, and also people. People of all shapes and sizes, people sitting on boxes, people carrying things, people hurrying, talking, laughing, individually and in groups. Some of the people noticed the scurrying kitten and they tended to point her out, make some sort of curious or approving sound and stop to watch her progress. Many others didn't notice her at all, what almost everybody noticed was the large human engineer running after her, waving an empty holdall and yelling incoherently. They noticed him indeed. In the strictest sense of the word, Kronsarama was faster than the kitten. Of course, in practice, he had a much more obstructed route. He was constantly having to swerve around things that the cat could squeeze past, and Caboodle could often slip between some unsuspecting person's legs, something Sarama was not equipped for. After a while, however, the kitten's ability to maintain a dead run began to fade. She simply wasn't built for covering any great distance at speed. As her endurance faded, so did her precision somewhat, and she was bumping into more things and more people or having to slow rapidly to avoid them. Sarama, meanwhile, was puffing hard, but using all of his energy to close the gap. And finally, he was closing on the tiny cat. It really was just terribly bad luck that the moment Caboodle chose to stop running coincided so perfectly with the moment Sarama caught up with her and reached his hands down to pick her up. Suddenly the kitten was behind him and he was still moving at speed and not watching where he was going. Caboodle cocked her head to one side as she saw Sarama run headlong into the largest Varga either of them had ever seen. A Varga made still larger by the bulk of his combat armour. Sarama bounced off and slid on his back to come to rest next to the kitten. Caboodle padded over and rubbed against Sarama's arm, purring loudly as the shadow of enraged armoured Varga fell across them. Oh, oh Kron, Kron versus Varga. It's quite exciting. So I know you're all here for the cat, but I'm here for Kron. I've tried to invite him for things and he always turns me down. Fun <laughs> it's very rare that we get a, uh, a, cron, a cronning. A good cronning. That's what we need, a good cronning. Good cronning, yeah. good cronning tonight. Thank That's you, Ben. <laughs> right, the hat can go back up there for now. My daughters, have stopped, up, my daughters have stopped asking me why there's a hat up there. 
they just accept it now. <laughs> this is part of the living room. <laughs> yes, it's it's now too complicated to explain. You kind of meant to be just there. A, just a fish hat. Just ignore it. My yeah, lips are on the gorilla. <laughs> on the gorilla. The stuff. Yeah. Well, not the stuff. The cuddly <laughs> toy gorilla. <laughs> stuff gorilla would be a whole different story. Oh, that would be a completely <laughs> different thing. Oh, ethical. <laughs> Yeah, it's flush, not taxidermy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Might be able to. Uh, is there? Yeah. Just about. Just about. <clears throat> Smooth. I like it. Uh, well, thank you both very much. That was great fun. Thank you both very much. As always. As always. Okay. Uh, it's the. Is the plan too, Ray Luke? We will raise. Yeah, I've got one. Uh, Rook and Rasp are doing something, and I think it would be utterly wrong of us to not raid Rook and Rasp. It would indeed. I agree. Good people. I think that's very sensible. Before we go, we should mention the rest of the weekend, shouldn't we? I think it'd be Definitely. wrong. Too. <laughs> Tomorrow night, uh, 11 UK time, we're doing the Buffy the Vampire Slayer role playing game, though it's actually called Clarissa the B Vampire Slayer, this oh. particular version of it. Um, um, so we will be. We will be doing that tomorrow night at 11, and then Sunday night is Heavy Rain. Oh, it? yes, the most cheerful of all the games we've ever played. <laughs> One hour of Heavy Rain, we've had a child die, another child hate us, and horrible serial murders. And, so. and, and it is, I mean, it's full of the most intense emotional action, and yet weirdly doesn't seem to be particularly fast-paced. I don't really understand how that happens, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Well, I did spend 20 minutes walking around with a bare chest. That's true. And and then I played as him with a bare chest. So, you know. That, that was my favourite part of the stream, just walking around in just pants. I didn't like the fact he put his dirty pants on again after the shower, though. That that definitely turned me off to him a little bit. Yes, thanks, Socks. I'd forgotten about the brushing the teeth, which did take <laughs> a very long time. you got to do it right. You've got to count. You've got to do your two minutes. Two minutes worth, yeah. Two minutes worth, can't rush it. <laughs> yeah, so Luke plays 11.45 on Sunday, and if you're available tomorrow night for uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, come and join us. We're playing, a well, it's new to us as a, as a stream, Ooh. at least. And uh, we're hoping it'll be fun. I'm excited. Because uh, we're anything. missing Luke tomorrow. You are missing me. I've got my, my anniversary. Some things are more important than streaming. I've lost track of how many years it is now. Um, uh, 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 oh, 18, I think, 18 years. That's a long time. Wow. Uh, 18 years since you were married or since 18, you... 18 years since I was married. I've, I've known her 21, 21 years. Like. Okay, yeah. Fantastic. That's, that's so yeah. long. That's more than half my life. Poor Almost girl. a third of your life. Poor, poor, more well, half my life. Congratulations. Poor, poor woman. Yeah, many congratulations on that. And, yeah, yeah, uh, and have a good time tomorrow. Well, we're going to uh, that Japanese place that we went to. Oh, yeah, jealousy. Have some have some sushi mackerel for me. I will do. <laughs> and some sake for Ben. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And one of those weird egg lollipops. Those were good. Oh, yeah, they were good. Definitely. I'm up for egg lollipops any day of the week. Yeah. Uh, yes, have a lovely time without us. Um, and we'll probably raise a glass to you on stream. <laughs> I'll probably join in for the second half, to be honest, because you know I don't go to bed early. So uh, uh, I'll probably I'll join you after very, midnight at some true. point. So Yes. We look forward to it. Hope it goes really well. Who's playing with you tomorrow? Uh, we've got Sox joining us. Uh, it's an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> and where are we playing, Ben? What's the, uh, what's the setting? Oh, yes. Uh, so just very briefly... It's set in the year 71, I think it is, BCE, in Rome, um, during the um, last days of the Third Servile War, so the Spartacus Rebellion. Which is perfect, because Ben's going to have to update, certainly me, on anything history-related <laughs> from that period of time. Sp just watch Spartacus tomorrow, the whole thing. And I'm loving series. it. <laughs> I'm, I'm too busy taking in other pop culture for other stuff that we've got going on. No, socks. You don't need to worry about about that. The the back. I, I've literally written little paragraphs of introduction and data bombs to drop when needed. Oh, so, so just sit there with a glass of wine. Like sit there with a glass of wine. Close your eyes and listen to his voice as he tells you the story of the Third Servile War. 
Could you think of anything? Yeah, we're not really going to cover the war that detail. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, just um, just turn up and have some fun because this is the first time we've ever done these rules, mm. so we're going to be feeling our way through it a bit anyway. Yeah, but I'm very excited. It's good. Well, with any luck, it'll be some fun, won't it? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Thank you, chat. It's been very mm. kind to come and, and and be with us and watch with us and chat with us. Chat has been awesome. Uh, strong strong chat tonight. Like. Strong chat. Well, I love those still lurking at the end. Uh, right. Um, if Kron's still here playing uh, No Man's Sky, some Fridays I wish I was playing No Man's Sky and just listening to this instead, to be honest, but I've signed up to play in this. But... Uh, I hope, en- I hope you've enjoyed your No Man's Sky. Well, Luke. Oh, <laughs> no, Man's Sky's a, like no Man's Sky's a really good game, especially in VR. All right, <laughs> come over one night and and you'll you'll see. You'll be you'll be refusing to play every Friday from now on if that's the case. You'll, you'll be meeting Cron online to play with him, man. I tell you. Right. <laughs> right. Should we raid? Yeah, let's do it. Let's raid uh, Rock and Rasp. Um We'd appreciate it, guys. Um, of course, you're your own bosses. Uh, but if you're willing to jump across on the road with us and say hello to Rock and Rust because they always big us up and they are uh, lovely people. Yeah, so let's they do really it. Are. And there are some links between our communities, so let's do it. Give a big hello, even if you've got to go to bed in a second. Give them a few minutes, yeah? Yeah. That'd be cool. All right. Cheers, guys. Take care. Love you. Bye. Good night. Cheers. Let's raid. Raid. Stream is...